हेलो मैडम गुड आफ्टरनून भाई सर गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर चार गुड आफ्टरनून सर यस प्लीज प्लीज बिगिन गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल i welcome you all on behalf of uh, study of study on female breast committee foxy and amox public awareness committee for the core connect live webinar a webinar on breast health issues the pink saga i uh, welcome uh, i invite you all to join the lightning uh, the lamp and inaugurate the uh, webinar uh, i think we will hand over the proceedings to dr priya Dr. Yes. Priya, can we can we hold on with the prayer for a minute while Dr. Priya speaks? Yes. This is very funny. Am I audible? Yes, Dr. Priya. Yes. Yeah. A very warm and lovely afternoon. I would like to welcome all our guests, our delegates, and the faculty. Our president, Sir Dr. Rishikesh Pai, and we are indeed blessed to have the gracious presence of. Dr. Sunita Tandulwarkar, Dr. Pardesi Sir, and uh, Dr. Sneha Bhuyar Madam. So we are really blessed to have you all in this lovely webinar. The webinar, which is Core Connect, the Pink Saga, and it is related to the breast on the breast-related health issues. This is hosted by the Foxy Committee of the Breast Committee of Foxy, and the public awareness committee of the emox and dr charulata bapai dr priyankur roy and dr madhur uh, monika monika umardan they have been extremely instrumental in this wonderful webinar uh, i would like to request him to put the cv of dr charulata bapai thank you dr priya thank you for that introduction and um, indeed a very good afternoon to each and every one of you december is a fantastic month of joy festivities and enjoyment vacation but while everybody vacations and enjoys we doctors still continue our medical educational activity for the betterment of our patients and it is this same thought and idea with which we have come forth with the pink saga which is a webinar on breast health issues conducted along with the amogs uh, public awareness committee so sincere thanks uh, to dr priyankur and dr monika for joining hands with the breast committee for this fantastic webinar and we have the august presence of none other than dr rishikesh pai sir the chief guest of today's webinar we know he is so busy he is traveling all across the length and the breadth of the country along the river ganges and uh, we can see that he is connecting to this webinar through uh, uh, you know uh, on his way uh, for the next stop of his uh, yatra joining india it is indeed a big badlav moment that we are uh, seeing and he continues to inspire us with his energy and his new thoughts welcome dr rishikesh pai and of course hi 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 sir our guests of honor for today are none other than our very able very likable very approachable dr rp pardeshi sir who is um, the president of amogs and uh, welcome uh, pardeshi sir for our webinar our next guest of honor is none other than dr sunita tandurwadkar who is our dynamic you know inspiration uh, she combines energy passion technology and of course leadership qualities and leads by example so welcome dr surita and of course none other than dr sneha bhuyar 
who is my mentor, friend, philosopher, and guide, chairperson of the Breast Committee 2019 to 2021, who has nurtured Breast Committee with so much love and passion and taken it to such amazing heights today. So we are indeed honored to have all of you here as our, uh, you know, as our, uh, you know, privileged guests. Of course, our esteemed faculty and our dear delegates for this webinar. We invite you all for the presentation. Mr. Abhishek, can we please have the prayer? With that, we, um, you know, uh, request the good Lord to take us from darkness to light and enlighten us on so many issues which we need to know, which we need to go ahead with. Thank you so much for the prayer. Uh, Mr. Abhishek, do you have a, a Dr. Paisar CV and the video? Mr. Abhishek? Uh, I mean, CV I know. So I just want to just say that, sir, you inspire us with your energy, with your new thoughts, with your badlav moment, and uh, your CV is known to all. You are so dynamic. You have been the uh, the president of so many organizations. You've received so many awards. You've chaptered so many books. You've been the pioneer as far as uh, infertility is concerned, and you continue to guide us. Over to you, sir, for your uh, words of wisdom. Hello, uh, you know, I, you are all there. So I must, uh, you know, I, I, but I would like to show you uh, one sec. I would like to, how do you do this? Okay, this is our, our Dhanbad. The first time I'm coming to Dhanbad. After it's a real, because I should be ashamed of myself that I'm visiting the city after we have become president. But the problem is that we have got 263 societies and it is an amazing country, you know. As I travel the breadth of this country, you realize how how large and vast the country is. And, you know, it's very exciting to, you know, come to each of the, like yesterday I was there in, uh, in Ranchi, you know. I never expected it's such a beautiful city and the people there. And it's really fun, you know. It's, I really enjoying this uh, you know, connect with the people of our, you know, and we are 38,000. They're all very committed. It's a it's a fantastic feeling, you know. I feel that we should, all the presence will have to do it after me now, I think. <laughs> They'll have to connect with everyone. I said, the, Dr. Pandesi, I said, when you become president, you'll have to do it. So anyway, so I would like to th say that uh, I would like to, you know, Dr. Pardesi, our MOX president is there, and our dynamic Sunita, who is already I had been the IIG president, vice president of Foxy, and Isar now she'll become president of Isar as well. So a great technically sound person. Techn technology is very important for all of us. Uh, then of course Charu and Sneha, the you know, torch bearers of the breast committee, and then our new incoming vice president also is there, Girja Vag, who will be the next year's uh, the, she'll be blazing around the country next year and a lot of other people are also i can see many people komal chavan our dynamic you know uh, committee chairman now just just left the committee yeah, yeah. medical disorder committee chairman and so many other uh, people chavan my friend their varsha lade our uh, you know the uh, she is going to do the next amox and dr singhal mm -hmm. uh, is there dr garud is there and uh, I can see Priya Vora. So there are a lot of people, and you know, you know, I one breast committee is one committee which I was when they started this committee. You know, I was wondering, kya karenge, you know, whether they'll do a great job. But see, the leadership was, is what makes a difference. If the leaders are so good, the committee becomes very strong. So that's very important to that leadership really is very important in anything you do. The CEO is very important. And if the CEO is strong, then everything clicks. 
so i am very happy uh, and i am very excited i am just now uh, entering a new phase of my life by coming into dhanbad and you are uh, you know just we are launching your uh, committee workshop so you know i wish you the very best from the coal city me and niranjan were saying that tomorrow we'll early morning we'll get up and go into the coal mines and see what happens there so we are very excited and tomorrow from here we go to jamshedpur another very you know city i never visited in my life we are the, the the steel capital of a country and then from there the last phase will start which is uh, the the uh, durgapur and bardwan and calcutta the one city which i am missing out in, in this 21 cities that i have visited in the last 35 days is durgapur so that's the really you know eating my head ki how, you know how do can i uh, how can i reach durgapur how can i not miss it it's in my mind so anyway uh, it's very exciting and i was just telling everyone that i you know we are you know the ima president was there of ranchi i told him that we are more powerful than even the ima and which is a fact the federation is at present very powerful uh, association of in, very committed individuals and uh, you know uh, it's growing very fast and one of the important things we must do i was just thinking during this last 20 days is we must build a membership also na we have to cross the Amer- american college membership is around 50000 we must cross them so this year we will cross the american lot of our members are not uh, members and uh, dr pardesi and seniors are there dr sunita dr gija we have to find out a way where we can have a membership of the foxy directly uh, so we make the break up of the membership into two parts one is the local society membership and one is a transferable foxy membership directly because what is happening because of this issue of membership lot of people are not uh, becoming mem- you know continuing uh, their self themselves as members so before i leave i want you to show the love and affection see this they all come to so, so, so no tell out they have all come here wow this is apur bhai there apur bhai and, and they are all there here that priya here manoj karim wow. is there so yeah wow. this is uh, this is dhanbad ियलेक्टिनार and uh, now i hand over the mic to dr monica ungarn to kindly introduce uh, dr pardeshi sir and seek his blessing madam madam ma'am dr monica uh, a very good afternoon to one and all uh, thank you charu ma'am for uh, introducing my committee also uh first and foremost i would like to thank you to associate with the mock public awareness committee as well as the foxy public awareness committee because i represent both foxy as well as the mock in the public awareness committee as well as zone coordinator i have <clears throat> the pride and privilege to introduce dr rajendra singh pardesi sir who it's is okay, at the okay. helm of the mock monica yes. it's okay let us skip that yes, uh good sir, afternoon everybody uh respected chief guest dr rushikesh pai sir dr rushikesh pai is doing really excellent work and basically basic work but important connecting the people if we will connect people we can go together and we can succeed if we will go together so sir our sincere wishes to you in your future endeavor in foxy and all your activities so respected dr sunita tandwalkar dr sneha boyar dr madhuri patel dr alka pande dr yashodara pradeep and my amongst office bearers dr sujata dalvi dr uh, monica dr komal dr rashmika dr varsha lahade and dr charulata and incoming president dr girijawad and dr charmila first i wish to congratulate dr charulata bapai 
चेयरपर्सन ऑफ फोक्सी ब्रेस्ट कमिटी एंड डॉक्टर मोनिका ओबर्दन फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग सच एन एकेडमिक फीस्ट ऑन ब्रेस्ट हेल्थ इश्यूज चारुलता बापा इज सक्सेसर ऑफ डॉक्टर स्नेहा भोयर स्नेहा भोयर हेज डन लॉट ऑफ वर्क इन ब्रेस्ट कमिटी आई थिंक अपटिल नाउ शी इज मीन्स टेकन दिस कमिटी ऑन द हाइट With the galaxy of speakers like Dr. Divya Singhal, Dr. Girija Wag, Dr. Snell Jamal, Dr. Chalwata Bapai, Dr. Rashmi Kahar, and all chairpersons and panelists, I think this is going to be a great event. I wish every success to Dr. Sunita Tandwalkar for her future endeavor in Foxy as Foxy President, Dr. Snaya Bhuyar and Dr. Komal Chawan for their future endeavor as Vice President Foxy. wishing every success to this webinar thank you thank you so much for inviting me thank you thank you so much thank you sir. so much sir uh, so it is like you know your your parent organization and i couldn't think of a better place to start off my webinar than my parent organization who has supported me so much uh, throughout uh, uh, my entire you know endeavor to uh, become the chairperson so dr pardeshi i would like to really really uh, put here uh, uh, on on fact that uh, thank you so much for all the love encouragement and support that i received from you and the entire team amongst and help me uh, fulfill my dream thank you sir thank you for blessing our webinar thank you and uh, thank you so much uh, um Ma'am, you can please introduce the guest of honor. Yes, please. So our next guest of honor is none other than our dear Dr. Sunita Tanjorwadkar, Madam, who's been uh, the past president of POGS, who's been uh, the past president of IAGE. Uh, she has been the senior vice president in ISAR, and so many other titles. We've seen her actively in Foxy for I don't know how many years, and we really wonder. how she can you know manage so many things at one time her academics her advances in technology her continued medical education her newer papers and presentations and her further personal and professional goals dr sunita we warmly welcome you for our web webinar we wish you all the best for all your future endeavors uh, you are contesting for the post of uh, president foxy and we really support you for that throughout and over to you to bless our webinar thank you so much charu thank you am i audible yes you are thank uh, you first of all charu let me hugely congratulate for becoming the chairperson of a breast committee i have seen you working for it along with sneha bhuyar who has done amazing job as rishikesh says if the even i used to think ye breast committee mein karte kya hai yaar itna breast leke wo kaise pure year and year and year they will do the program and sneha has done amazing job she made you work with her as a national convener and i think this coordination this continuation by the same leader so what happens you know the work done by previous chairperson probably gets continued and then the new chairperson add on new horizon to that committee and just congratulating i know when you were contesting how much you were working hard for it your passion was palpable and you made us all proud charu charu is working in pogs for years together the most important character of charu apart from her intelligence apart from her hard work apart from creativity what is needed most is dependability any work you give maybe a small cme or maybe a very big breast con conference which she did successfully in 2022 shows her leadership quality and i know by entering into the foxy infertility committee slowly you will join to the vice president and the president post your leadership quality will evolve and probably because of your leadership quality you will achieve higher and higher post that's what my wish to is Today is your first webinar, and I'm so glad that you invited Dr. Rishikesh Pai. Again, his leadership quality is: we all in India, in one month, what he had done, 
which people could not achieve in entire year if i would have been a pass pass i said oh my god this is impossible myself nandita and reshma pai we keep on talking what he has done in one month i was a vice president with reshma pai we had done huge work i'm not saying that but this was unbelievable yatra which is doing three things he is combining public forum so awareness then he is doing a health education free campus so again he is helping in all society and third he is making cme because i have attended with him in the first session and this gynecological cme helping the gynecologist so it is very difficult to dream that is what the leader can take the organization to higher level and what shows commitment is his committee chairperson for a president this is a uh, really need a passion to come and preside and give you blessings for your first webinar shows how much he loves each and every committee member dr pardeshi sir you made a mock you have taken from nandita and we all used to think nandita was such a big leader and how you will take it and you showed your leadership quality you showed your inclusiveness you took each and every society member into amongs and you made maharashtra the most vibrant society i congratulate you and i am also thankful to you for making me a state coordinator so i can learn lot more from you dr yashodara i saw do for the first time i'm joined from the mobile i can't see everyone but your vice president dr yashodara i saw her and i am so happy that she is supporting her committee chairperson so beautifully your another idea of getting pack committee with you with priyankur and maharashtra society where monica the vibrant uh, chairperson of a pack committee at uh, national level at the state level she is accompanying you you are taking dr priya bora and pratibha baldava why this is important why i am observing this because these are the young people and you are taking them and making them understand how the organization work how to talk with how to compile the scientific program how to conduct the cmes because everyone cannot start with the national or international programs they have to start with small and this is how you have to take the people and of course your scientific program i always see whenever it is a breast committee even with sneha i used to see the topic of mastalgia abnormal nipple discharge the breast a uh, screening camps how one should uh, organize with the uh, dr divya girija and snehal i think you chosen the fantastic speaker i'm sure uh, girija you are always a fantastic speaker and i would love to be there above all your panel where lump and bumps in the breast i really love the world you created the bumps in the <laughs> breast along with rashmi kahar very dynamic from amravati that way this is what pardeshi sir has done he has chosen these diamonds and given them uh, the complete shape and given them the platform to perform you have taken the best of the panelists varsha lahade very dear friend nasik society president dr manisha ghate doing huge work in chandrapur along with her chandrapur friend dr priya shinde and then dr garad dr seema patil dr vandana my very 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 dear friend from and my houseman from uh, vmmc and dr rajendra chavan i don't know why anyone will not join to this webinar i wish you all the best charu and i look forward for your dynamic career and i hope so i get an opportunity to pre be with you in your third year of committee thank you thank you my god dr sunita that was such an exhausting outstanding um input that you gave to all of us and indeed you know along with so many other things we have to learn how you respect each and every individual around and um, you praise the smallest of smallest thing in the person opposite you thank you so much to sunita for joining us may all your wishes and dreams come true and we are with you thank you and now thank you uh, it is uh, thank you dear that will be to introduce none other than my dear dr sneha boyer
I think it is time, you know, it has become uh, that uh, my name will follow Sneha Bhuyar's name. And I like it so much, essentially, because I have been following her right since our BJMC days and our Sassoon General Hospital days, where mm -hmm. she has been my chief resident and I have been a junior resident. And not only did she teach me OBGYN, but she also sheltered me in her room because we all know that the condition of living for junior residents is, is, is quite pathetic. But uh, I got a posh and separate room along with Dr. Sneha. And, uh, you know, it was that was the time when I realized that she values friendship so much. And she, the okay. minute she decides, she will hold your hand and take you forward. And that is exactly what she did to me. And uh, I, I cannot thank her enough for her entire guidance that she gave me uh, as I rose to the the post of chairperson after her and i'm sure that with her skills academic skills her leadership skills her uh, her kindness her positivity her very clean and simple demeanor her command over the language her command over each and every topic we have seen that she has been talking on so many issues and topics all over the country uh, she's going to be one of the best leaders that we can have. And so, Sneha, best wishes for your future endeavors as you stand for the post of uh, VP Foxy in the coming elections. She's a governing council member, ICOG. Thank you, Charu. Disorders, and I think that uh, we would really like to hear from you. I don't know how it feels to be past chairperson. And over to you, Sneha. A very good evening to all of you. Thank you, Charu, for that kind and I would say a very generous introduction. Um, a very good evening, respected uh, Dr. Rishikesh Pai, the President Foxy, a very vibrant, dynamic, innovative, and a visionary, uh, almost very inspiring president, I would say. Um, the Vice President, Dr. Alka Pandey, and Madam Yashodhara Pradeep. Um, today's chief guest, and my mentor, Dr. Pardesi, sir, a MOCS president, very calm, composed, and inclusive, easily approachable person. Uh, of course, Dr. Sunita Tandalwarkar, uh, a very inspiring leader, the brain and beauty, the very updated academically and technologically as well. Uh, very good evening to uh, Dr. Girija Vak, my dear friend, and Dr. Komal Chavan, the MOCs, uh, Dr. Priya and Pratibha, and of course, Varsha Lahade, Taru, Divya, I think all my dear friends, a warm welcome to all of you. Though I, I have just finished my uh, tenure as chairperson, I still welcome you all uh, to this committee program. And a ch Charu, a very hearty congratulations and all the best to uh, you for your tenure. Dr. Monica, hearty congratulations for this program. And I'm very proud of you taking all the issues ahead as AMOX uh, Public Awareness Committee Chairperson. All the faculty, chairperson, panelists, and moderators, a very good evening to all of you. I would just say that as chair, uh, press committee, everybody has this issue, you know, what these people are working. So we are working on three issues mainly, the breastfeeding promotion, benign breast diseases and awareness screening and early detection of breast cancer uh, because this is the major killer of women uh, in this last two decades especially. It is even surpassing the cervical cancer deaths. At the same time, we are for this, uh, we are training, uh, we are sensitizing the Foxians, uh, updating their knowledge through various CMEs, updates, newsletters, and you know, ready reckoners as well. Uh, we are training the paramedics and we are writing the uh, informative articles, making you know the rallies and marches for this uh, public awareness, and we are organizing huge uh, mass screening uh, programs. So I think uh, Charu will continue this uh, uh, work, which is you know continued uh, from uh, to uh, me even from the previous press committee chairperson. I would say uh, me and Charu have worked together, and we have taken up this work ahead. And I wish Charu all the best and uh, all the best for this webinar as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Sneha. I cannot imagine any breast committee webinar without you. So I'm sure that I will keep inviting you for each and every. Can I say something? Yeah. 
Charu, can I say something? Because I have joined from a mobile, I could not see. Now I see Taru, a very dynamic girl and a lovely friend of ours. And uh, Taru, thank you so much. And I could see Dr. Komal, Dr. Anjali, Dr. Suyoga, Dr. Nirupama, uh, and Dr. Vaishali Dattal, the president of Latro Vaishwai Society, and Dr. Anjali. I just saw them while they were. So I just wanted to acknowledge them and send my love to them. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sunita, for taking out time for these minor details. And that is what will make you a great leader. Thank you so much, Dr. Sunita. And um, I think Yashodhana, Madam, Yashodhana, Ma'am, are you around? I think Madam had to leave. She has uh, given her message. Uh, we would have liked to be blessed by her, but just her presence is enough uh, to bless us. Uh, so with that, uh, we conclude our inauguration and I request Dr. Monica to, uh, uh, to propose the vote of thanks for the same. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would extend a heartfelt thank you to each and every person who has taken the time to join this webinar. I would be thankful to Dr. Rishikesh Pai, sir, for giving his blessings. Dr. Parvechi, sir, for allowing Amox committee to join with the Foxy committees and conduct a webinar. I would also like to thank the guest of honor, Dr. Sunita Kandurwalkar, madam, and Sneha Huyar, madam. Both of them are so appreciative that each and every junior person like me would like to work with them. Thank you so much, ma'am. I would also like to thank all the delegates and the faculties who have joined in. I am sure we will have a great scientific session forward. I would now would like to call on Dr. Divya Vora, ma'am, to please conduct the session forward. Thank you so much, ma'am. And think the last but not the uh, last but not the least, I would like to thank both the vice presidents, Dr. Yashodra, madam, and Dr. Alka Pandey, madam, and the chairperson, PNC committee, Dr. Priyankur Roy, for the same. Thank you. Uh, yes, I think the vote of thanks cannot be complete without me thanking Dr. Monica. Uh, indeed, she's a treasure house of, uh, you know, knowledge, passion and willingness mm. to work for the society and the committee. Uh, the speed with which she would do things, uh, you know, uh, will, will really put any of us to shame is what I thought. Monica, okay. a lot to learn from you from for all of us also. And uh, thank you for the instant cooperation that you gave from your side. And thank you for all the collaboration and the coordination that you did from your side. Thank you, Foxy, and thank you, PSC, uh, and thank you, Amongst, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I cannot, uh, you know, the thank yous can go on, and I think we need to move ahead go with the scientific on. session. So, uh, over you. to you, you, MOC, for the scientific session. So, now we will conclude the inauguration. I would like to invite and introduce the other two MOCs with me, Dr. Pratibha Bal. Dava. She's a consultant at the Valdava Neurosciences Hospital and Women's Hospital at Sholapur. And she has been the treasurer and the secretary of the Sholapur OBGY Society. She has published a number of uh, papers in various journals. And Dr. Taru Chaya, she's a director at the Bansal Hospital in Jaipur. She's visiting consultant at Kukun and Surya Hospitals and secretary of the Jaipur Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And she's a member at the Foxy Breast Committee. Over to you, to both of you all, to continue with the scientific session, please. A very good afternoon to all of you and to the respected faculties. We will we shall start with our first session. I shall call the chairpersons for the same. The chairpersons for today's first speaker are Dr. Vaishali Dattal, madam, and Dr. Anjali Ware, madam. Dr. Vaishali Dattal, madam, is president of Latur OBGY Society and a very good close friend of mine. Abhishek, can we have the slides? He has projected them. It's already projected, ma'am. Okay. I cannot see them, actually. Uh, she's director of okay. Hospital. Yeah. 
Dr. Vaishali Tatal, Madam, is President of the Latur OBGY Society and past treasurer. She has conducted numerous tubectomy camps and conducted various educational workshops through Rotary and Logs. She was a fact she is a faculty at state and regional conferences, and she has special interest in infertility and high-risk pregnancy. I welcome you, Vaishali, Madam. The other chairperson for today is Dr. Anjali Ware, Madam. She is president of Aurangabad OBGY Society and consultant at Vare Hospital Aurangabad. She is practicing since the last 27 years in high-risk obstetrics and sonography. She conducted adolescent health camps in school and colleges, and she has worked in obstetric HDU. I welcome you too, ma'am. So I hand over the mic to y'all, and uh, y'all can welcome the speaker, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Pratibha. Um, yes. First of all, thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Thank you, Pratibha, Priya, and uh, uh, Taru Chaya for giving me the opportunity to chair the session. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce Dr. Priya Singhal, ma'am. She has done diploma in advanced endoscopy at France. She is consult consultant in obstetric and gynec at Fortis Hospital, Jaipur, Golden Hospital, RG Stone, Laparoscopic Hospital. She has been credited with APJ Abdul Kalam Appreciation Award in 2018. Awarded of Excellence IMA Bao Delhi ISA and Excellence in Field of Medicine IMA DMA North. Her special interest in high-risk pregnancy, breast and carcinoma cervix prevention. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, honorable chairpersons, revered guests, esteemed faculty, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank Dr. Charu Lata Bapai for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I start my talk with a quote from Michelle Obama, who says, there is no limit to what we as women can accomplish. Friends, there is no limit to what we as gynecologists can accomplish. Next, please. The talk is on management of nostalgia. Now, one would wonder, what can there be uh, to talk about in nostalgia? Well, the objectives are to alleviate symptoms of pain. And there is a hidden agenda, and that is to identify those patients who are at high risk of breast cancer so that increased surveillance can be initiated. Also, whenever a patient comes with pain, she comes with an underlying fear of cancer. Hence, the third objective is to conduct appropriate investigations to rule out breast cancer so as to reassure the woman. Next, please. Breast pain is a very common symptom. About 45% of breast clinical evaluations are done for nostalgia, thus also providing us the opportunity to screen for breast cancer. Next, please. There are three types of nostalgia, cyclic, non-cyclic, and extra mammary. Cyclic nostalgia occurs during the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle. Patient complains of heaviness, diffused bilateral pain. It can sometimes radiate to the axilla and the upper arm, and it is relieved by the onset of menstrual flow. Next, cyclic, non-cyclic nostalgia, on the other hand, is unilateral, localized, constant. It is caused by the inflammation of fibroadenoma, diabetic mastopathy, lesions like macrocysts, duct ectasia, etc. Next. Extra mammary pain is due to chest wall muscular, muscular pains, trauma, pleuritic pain. Important to notice that angina can also present as extra mammary pain. And another important thing is that 10% of breast cancer patients come with the symptom of breast pain only. Next, please. Etiology is multifactorial. It could be due to increased estrogen secretion during the luteal phase. It could be due to hyperprolactinemia water retention, psychoneurosis, excess caffeine intake, smoking, aberration and lipid metabolism. Knowing these multi-factors can help us customize the treatment for our patient of nostalgia. Next, please. Now, how do we evaluate a patient who comes with breast pain? Well, any patient who comes with pain anywhere in the body, four pertinent questions should be asked. And though those are what, when, where, and how. So what time of the menstrual cycle does she get the pain? When is it more? Is it during physical activity? Where does it radiate to or is it localized? 
and how is it relayed by medication or by the onset of periods. The patient is asked to maintain a pain diary for two months where she notes down the severity of pain, any leave, leave or absence from work or school. Next, she's also given a visual analog scale where she identifies her pain with the emoji and tick marks the same. A score of five or more is uh, important and significant for management of nostalgia. Next, please. Then after the pain, we ask her personal history, which can which includes her exercise, her dietary habits, smoking, alcohol. Important to note is the family history, where a history of breast cancer in first degree relatives, especially if the breast cancer occurred before the age of 45 years, is very important. Also, history of ovarian, prostate, colon, and pancreatic cancers in first degree and second degree relatives should be asked for. Why? Because these all these uh, cancers share the same gene mutants. Drugs like ocepils and HRT can also cause pain. Next, please. The uh, patient is then examined. Clinical breast examination will be taken by other esteemed faculty. So let's skip this slide. Next, please. Important to note during the examination is that the axillary tail should be examined and the patient should be examined. The chest wall should be examined laterally right up to the mid axillary line, inferiorly right up to the subcostal area, also axillary supraclavicular as well as infraclavicular lymph nodes should be looked for and examination should be done for extra mammary causes like herpes zoster and costochondral tenderness should be elicited. Uh, next. The investigations, we have examined, we've taken the history, we've examined the patient, now we come to the investigations. All patients, all women patients should receive, have a mammogram after the age of 40. Ultrasonography can be done at all age, uh, ages and a core biopsy is done if there is a suspicious lesion. Next. Just like there are three fundamental rules to lead a good life, we have three fundamental tests the clinical breast examination, imaging by mammography, ultrasound or MRI, and a core biopsy if indicated to rule out breast cancer. So once we've done that, next please. Once we've ruled out breast cancer, then the diagnosis of nostalgia is made by exclusion criteria. Next. Coming to the treatment of nostalgia, next please. The first line of treatment is reassurance, reassurance, and reassurance. We tell the patient we have done all the examination required, all the tests required, and she does not have breast cancer. So there is nothing to worry. This itself, this much uh, itself, uh, kind of alleviates her pain and fear. Next, she is also counseled to do breast self-examination every month and come yearly for checkups. 70% of women wear ill-fitting braziers. So a well-fitting brazier is very important. It comes in the first line of treatment for nostalgia and a sports bra is advised for exercise. Next. In an RCT, it was seen that avoiding caffeine, using simple analgesics and a good exercise program and the use of a sports bra elevated the pain to a large extent. Diet should be low in fat, 15%. Fats only. Next, please. Next. Yes. Phytoestrogens. They are plant derived serms, and a well researched group is isoflavones like soya beans, chick uh, peas, tofu, sesame seeds. All these have uh, soya has been uh, researched on and it's been found to be very good for alleviating nostalgia pain. Next, please. Uh, please keep pressing. Flex seeds, nigella sativa seed oil. This is our own kalonji oil. A good uh, RCT was TB, PCT was done on kalonji oil and it was found to be as effective as diclofenac gel. Next, evening primrose oil, vitamin B6 and vitamin E play no role and should not be misused. Next, low intensity laser therapy is many times useful. Next, please. Coming to the pharmacological treatment, NSAIDs. 
the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, naproxen, diclofenac acid, we hesitate to use them very often, but they should be used. They are least toxic and they work both for cyclic as well as non-cyclic nostalgia. They are about 80% effective. Topical NSAIDs also form the first line of treatment and their benefits outweigh adverse reactions. Again, diclofenac and peroxicam uh, gel is very effective both for cyclic as well as non-cyclic pain, and they are a reasonable alternative to oral NSAIDs. Next, SIRMS. This is a very important slide. Selective estrogen modulator receptors work by blocking estrogen receptors to SIRMS, tamoxifen and centcomen. So tamoxifen 10 milligrams per day for a period of three to six months is about 80 to 90% effective in uh, controlling nostalgia, but there are side effects like irregular periods, endometrial hyperplasia, hot flashes, but it is the drug of choice if the first line of NSAIDs and, uh, uh, fails. Centcromon is a made in India product and it is uh, said to be very effective. A lot of studies have been done in AIMS and elsewhere. Uh, a dose of 30 milligrams per day for 12 weeks is very effective. And the best part is that there are no side effects uh, like irregular cycles or thromboembolic phenomenon. Or um, So this is a very useful drug and should be used. Next, please. Next. So bromocryptin, uh, the first bromocryptin can be used if there is uh, prolactinemia and a diuretics if there is water retention. GnRH analogs are used if nothing else works, and it should not be used for more than six months. Uh, the um, it, the side effects are hot flashes, vaginal dryness, oily hair and skin, like we all know, and a backup of HRT might have to be used in case uh, we have to use it for more than six months. It forms the second line of therapy. Next, please. Danazol is the only drug which has been approved by the US FDA, ironically, but it has virilizing side effects, so it doesn't come much into use. But yet, if nothing else works, then we have Danazol. Sometimes just withdrawal of OC pills and HRT is good enough. Next. For non-cyclic pain, sometimes aspiration of macrocysts under ultrasound guidance works. There is no role of surgical management. Next, please. Finally, relaxation therapy. Relax like your life depends on it. Next, please. To conclude, rule out breast cancer by triple assessment test. Reassure the patient. Advise her a good, a well-fitting garment uh, for breast support. NSAIDs and topical NSAIDs gel work very well. Second line treatment is centochromon tamoxifen therapy for three to six months, GnRH analogs for severe refractory cases, vitamins, GLA, and primrose oil are not effective. Next, please. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Dr. Charu Lata, please unmute yourself. So I think we'll uh, we'll take our chairperson's comments for the same. Dr. Uh, Vare is there? I think uh, is that chairperson here? I think Dr. Divya, that was an excellent talk. And uh, probably, as you rightly said, nostalgia is probably one of the most common symptoms uh, that we come across. And women are extremely worried that it whether it is malignancy. And uh, the, the thing is to relieve them of this fear. So what is, again, more important is that uh, only examination may not suffice. And we would have to probably do either an ultrasound uh, and or a mammography for the patient. Uh, you know, you take this opportunity to make sure that she gets screened. I, 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 we think that it is always a good idea that she's come to you with a breast problem. Just make sure that you undergo some kind of screening procedure for her. And then, uh, uh, you know, you relieve yourself as well as her that there is no problem. And uh, the second thing which I would like to say is that um, uh, the Sacroman, this, this, uh, the brand name Sevista, that is something which we all need to use much, much, much more 
um, not only uh, you know uh, for our AUB, uh, but also for uh, for breast problems. But because nostalgia gets treated and cured so fantastically, I think we have Dr. Sharmila, we have Dr. Girija here. We could take uh, uh, um, you know an inputs from uh, both of them uh, uh, regarding uh, nostalgia. Dr. Girija. Yeah, actually, uh, one of the most important thing is corrective breastwear, according to me, what Madam uh, Divya Singhal said was very important. Because many times patients have postural issues and wrong, um, uh, you know, breast um, um, support systems that they wear. That is one. And the second most important thing is, as you mentioned, yes, on a Luxofen or an SCRM can be of great help in patients who are very reluctant. But I will always start with a uh, supplement of a primrose oil or uh, you know some sort of a pyridoxin and a belong uh, typical combination or give them some sort of a vitamin B tell them to uh, you know sort of stop coffee and I look at it as an opportunity of screening them as you rightly said Charu because we all belong to Pune especially you and me where the highest cancer in Pune is breast cancer I must share this with you that the topmost cancer is breast cancer and it is seen to be affecting women in the age groups of 35 to 45. So even before we are, women are aware of cancer service to an extent, but breast cancer is something which is stopping and they, the best way of diagnosing we have understood is self breast examination. So educate women to examine, they come presenting. There's something I feel in my breast doc. And then from there, it all the story starts. So none of them have gone through any regular screening of mammography, sonography or anything. Charu, I think you have the similar kind of an experience True what that. how we detect our young women with breast cancers currently. True. <clears throat> so that was a great input. And Charmila, would you like to to Charmila? Thank you, Charu. It's actually what Girija was saying. Like you take the opportunity to screen her because many times we think that painful breasts will not have cancer inside. So never have that misconception yes, yes. and use a tool, uh, ask her to screen herself and tell her the proper protocol because she may come to you once and may not turn back in the next years. So you have to tell her very clearly that it has to be done because more obesity has become such a big problem and dense breasts are really a problem for uh, even the, uh, the the greatest screening too. So she's not going to undergo, it's going to cause lots of problems. And uh, as uh, Girja said, I would like to start with a supportive uh, bra for her so that she does not have that postural problem for fibroadenosis prude and then probably give her evening primrose oil. It seems to work in a great group of patients. It may not go to higher drugs, but ormiloxifen, Senchromon is really a good drug for uh, fibroadenosis, that also you cannot give it for a prolonged period of time because it's known to cause uh, thrombosis. DVT is uh, common when you use it for prolonged years. So it should be like a change of her lifestyle so that she at least reduces her weight, keeps her coffee and tea under control and uh, screens herself and has to take it on and off. Uh, whenever she's got problems, take evening primrose oil, switch over when she has a bigger problem like that. So that will make a better uh, scheme of things for people with uh, a painful breast. Smoking also under control. Smoking is quite rampant in urban bound women, you know, that also causes <laughs> active and passive both forms. I think. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. That was some great interaction that we had. Uh, over to you, MOCs, for the next session. Dr. Taru. Thank you so much, madam. Now we go on to the next speaker. May I call upon the chairpersons for the next speaker? Our chairpersons are Dr. Komal Chavan. Everybody knows Dr. Komal very well. She is the chairperson of Medical Disorder Committee. Madam has been uh, the chairperson of MOX Family Welfare and MTP Committee, member of Managing Council MOGS, and a joint secretary ISOPAB Mumbai chapter. She has also been the premises secretary for AFG and a national expert for Foxy UNICEF Luxury Project. The other chairperson for today is none other than our, uh, our Sulapur Obstetric Gynec Society president, Dr. Anjali Jamma, madam. She is a consultant at Jamma Hospital and Laparoscopic Surgery Center since 2000. It is her first laser gynecology center in Shulapur and nearby district. She has had special training in ultrasound and laparoscopy. She is well trained in laser training in cosmetic gynecology and her main area of interest is also the same. Uh, she's been yeah. invited as faculty at many of the conferences. I hand over the mic to the chairpersons now. 
Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pratibha, for the kind introduction. And at the outset, I would like to congratulate my dear friend, Charu. I think uh, Charu Bappe has taken over the breast committee and she's doing real, real wonders. Uh, organizing such focus program. I, I can see the enthusiasm and zeal in her before she became the chairperson. And she's definitely going to take the committee to the great heights. So all the best wishes, Dr. Charu, and uh, also Dr. Monica, the Public Awareness Committee of MOX. And now I have a proud privilege to introduce uh, Dr. Giri Jawag. And we all know Dr. Giri Jawag as a professor, Department of Obstetrics at Bharatiya Vidya Peet Medical College, Pune. She is the vice president elect of, of Foxy. And uh, I, I have a very close association because she also belongs to the Foxy Medical Disorders in Pregnancy Committee, having been chair of the committee from 2012 to 16. Uh, and she's a vice president of India Chapter of Gestosis, member of the governing council of ICOG 2011 to 14, assistant coordinator for National Eclampsia Registry. And she has also been the mentor for Luxia, MOH, FW, peer reviewer of many journals, including the Jogi, BJOG. And she has so many awards and numerous uh, publications to her credit. And also the regional director of Steady Medic. I think her teaching is her passion. And we are really eagerly waiting to hear from you, Dr. Giri Jawad. So over to you, Dr. Giri Jawad. Oh, thank you so much, Komal, for that wonderful introduction. And thank you, Jamma Madam, for being here to chair the session. Dr. Anjali, I'm sorry I've been dodging your invitation so often. And I promise that I'll come to Sholapur. At the outset, I would like to congratulate Charu for bringing this entire webinar together. I hope my slides are seen. Is that, are they seen? Are yes, they are clear. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you, Dr. Charu, for bringing us all together here on this webinar. And I think webinar is the best thing because we can connect through our offices and we can connect to so many people. And uh, I hope I'll be able to make justice through whatever has been given to me as a task by you, Charu. And uh, abnormal nipple discharge is something that we really, many of the times, we face it as gynecologists because patients trust us for their breast-related issues. And naturally, then we are <clears throat> left at, you know, a sort of a question as to how am I going to deal with this breast uh, discharge? Now, it's the third most common breast-related complaint. And after breast uh, pain and breast mass, we just had a talk on nostalgia. And 80% of women will have an episode of a nipple discharge during their reproductive age group. And thankfully, most of them are benign in origin. And the primary goals of evaluation and management are to differentiate patients with benign nipple discharge from those who have an underlying papilloma or maybe a high-risk lesion or cancer and to manage patients with underlying pathological nipple discharge. While I'm saying this, I must also tell you that not many cancers would present with nipple discharge and that's a problem. And most of the discharging ones would be benign. Now you can see her in the picture that there can be an intraductal papilloma also, which can be just a simple benign growth in a single milk duct in a woman, and that can be giving rise to the discharge. So today we are going to look at the types, how to evaluate and manage this common problem. And we are not going to deal with any surgical management and I would conclude with an algorithm for approach. Now we all know that normal milk production in the form of lactation, Physiological nipple discharge in the form of galactoria can be present sometimes in a few women, or it can be a pathological suspicious nipple discharge. Sometimes galactoria can also be a result of hyperprolactinemia or you know, certain other secondary causes, such as some medicines that the woman is taking. Now we know that lactation is a normal secretory product of the breast, that is milk and colostrum, and during pregnancy in the postpartum period, the mammary glands will develop and produce milk in response to several physical and biochemical forces. And it can continue for at least six months after delivery of the cessation of breastfeeding. And today the WhatsApp university has educated women. Most of my patients are trying and attempting to feed their babies for two years. And that's something nice. So they will be continuing to have this breast secretion. Now, galactoria is defined as non-pathological nipple discharge and related to pregnancy or breastfeeding and is usually manifested as bilateral milky nipple discharge involving multiple ducts. And although it's usually bilateral, white, clear, may also be unilateral and a variety of other colors, including yellow, 
green, brown, or gray, but not bloody can be present. And it is very commonly caused by hyperprolactinemia, which may be secondary to medications, pituitary tumors, endocrine abnormalities, or other medical conditions. Now, pathological or suspicious nipple discharge or the secretory production of fluids other than milk, which may be due to a pathological cellular process in the breast. And this discharge is usually unilateral, localized to a single duct, persistent and spontaneous. It can be serous, that is clear or yellow, sang sanguinous or bloody or serosanguinous, which is blood tinged. And common etiologies of pathological nipple discharge include papilloma, DCIS, and so on, and we'll look after each one of them. Now, papilloma happens to be the most common cause of pathological nipple discharge in a benign, and it's usually found in 50 to 57 percent of the women, is a papillary tumor growing from the lining of the breast duct, and the discharge associated with the papilloma can range from clear to grossly bloody, and solitary papillomas can occasionally harbor areas of atypia or ductal carcinoma in C2, and therefore they have to be treated or approached properly. Now, there's another condition that is duct ectasia, which is another common benign cause of pathological nipple discharge. In approximately 14 to 33% of pathological nipple discharge cases, and you can see that this is a normal duct here. I'll just get my pointer. This is a normal duct here, and this would be a dilated and a clogged uh, duct that you can see here. Now, cancer would be found in 5 to 15% of cases of pathological nipple discharge. And the most common malignancy associated with nipple discharge in the absence of other findings is the DCIS. And if you are lucky enough, you can find it and treat it early. But sometimes you may have different stages and phases that would come by. Now, infection can be a cause, especially when there is a periductal mastitis or a purulent nipple discharge. And therefore, clinical evaluation is very important where you take a thorough history, do a physical examination, and this should be performed in all women in non-lactational nipple discharge or to determine if it is physiological or pathological. Now, the clinical history is most helpful in distinguishing physiological from pathological nipple discharge, and a complete medical history should be obtained with specific areas to address. Now, what is very important <clears throat> is the appearance of the discharge, frequency of the discharge, whether it is spontaneous or provoked by manipulation of the breast and or nipple areolar complex, and whether the discharge is unilateral or bilateral and uniductal or multiductal has to be established. Physiological nipple discharge is usually bilateral and multiductal and occurs with breast manipulation. Conversely, the risk of cancer is higher when the discharge is spontaneous, bloody, unilateral, uniductal associated with a breast mass and or occurs in women over 40 years of age. I would like to modify this even younger women, we have to be a little careful. A history of recent trauma should be elicited and the trauma can include mammographic imaging with comparison as well as vigorous manipulation of the nipple, recent onset of amenorrhea or other symptoms of hypogonadism, hot flashes, which anal dryness should prompt concentration of hyperprolactinemia. So this can be a part of your clinical, thorough clinical evaluation, which you can approach the woman with. Now, several cases of classes of medications can cause hyperprolactinemia. Many times women are not very ready to disclose and tell you that they are taking antidepressant medicines. So you should proactively ask them this question. And anticoagulants can also cause blood nip bloody nipple discharge in patients who sustain trauma to the breast, even that as a mild as mammographic manipulation that would come in sometimes some, you know, the classical mammographic manipulations sometimes can be extremely traumatic to patients giving rise to a nipple discharge. And while I was speaking on infection, I must also remind you all that being in India, we should always start looking at breast, any kind of breast lesions which are infectious in origin and have a differential whether it's a tuberculous breast abscess, because many times even that can happen in whatever 30 years of practice. I complete today 30 years of my clinical and academic practice. Today, I started it uh, formally. And I've seen about two patients who have presented with tuberculous breast, um, you know, uh, masses, which were actually abscesses. Now, complete breast examination should be performed as detailed and the specific goals of the examination are to be followed, like note the symmetry and contour of the breast, position of the nipple scars and vascular pattern, as well as any evidence of skin retraction, dimpling, edema or edema, ulceration or crusting of the nipple and changes in skin color. 
The skin covering the breast and the nipple areolar complex should be examined for lesions that may be staining the woman's clothes and mimicking the nipple discharges. Some examples can be the Paget's disease, insect bites, local infections, and eczema, and suspicion skin lesions should be biopsied. It's very important to document all this correctly. So detect the enlarged axillary or supraclavicular lymph nodes, mention them, delineate and document breast masses, identify localized areas of tenderness and relate them to areas of pain noted by the woman and no other physical findings. And women with bilateral discharge, the physical examination should include checking for a chiasmal syndrome that is bitemporal field loss and signs of hypothyroidism or hypogonadism we have to look for. Now, there are various ways in which imaging can be performed and especially mammograph and ultrasound. And I'm going to tell you what are the typical guidelines that are there in context with these approaches. Women more than or equal to 40 years should undergo both diagnostic mammography and focused breast ultrasonography. Patients who had a recent mammograph that is under six months or are pregnant may undergo breast ultrasonography alone. And mind you, even during pregnancy, there are patients who are presented with breast cancers. Immediate post delivery there can be. And therefore, we have to be very, very sensitive to complaints with which the women come to us. Women between 30 and 39 years of age should undergo diagnostic mammography first, followed by breast ultrasonography if necessary. And women less than 30 years of age should undergo breast ultrasonography first. Mammography is only performed if the initial ultrasound shows a suspicious finding or if the patient is genetically predisposed or has a hereditary breast cancer. And today we also have a genetic testing which can be performed for these women. So we are fortunate right now, which can be offered to women in case they have a very strong family history of the same. Now mammography digital with or without tomosynthesis is the first line imaging modality for evaluation of pathological nipple discharge in most practices. Although it is the best modality for identifying suspicion lesions, mammography may fail to show cancers or high-risk lesions that are small, lack calcifications or entirely intraductal. And the sensitivity and specificity of mammography for detection of cancer or high-risk lesions such as papilloma or atemia ranges from 7 to 10 and 94 to 100 percent respectively. And therefore, we have to be very, very driven by our physical and clinical assessment. Focused ultrasound provides a useful tool for the diagnosis of ductal disease as it is directed to the perioral area and provides visualization of dilated ducts and any nodules inside them. It's especially useful for identifying lesions within the mammary ducts and it allows visualization of ductal pathology as small as 0.5 mm. And we have very, very high resolution ultrasound machines nowadays with good breast probes and they can be of great help. And when evaluating pathological nipple discharge, ultrasound can identify 63 to 69% of lesions not visible on mammography. It also is used to guide percutaneous biopsy of lesions and or wire localization for surgery. Although ultrasound is more sensitive than mammography, it is less specific in differentiating benign from the malignant lesions. Now, patients with pathophilological nipple discharge but negative mammogram and ultrasound may undergo breast magnetic resonance imaging. And this is a relatively sensitive imaging modality with moderate specificity. And a contrast enhanced MRI has demonstrated 93 to 100% sensitivity for invasive cancers, as well as benign papillary lesions. However, specificity has been reported to be as low as 37%. Others can be galactography, ductoscopy, cytology. Sometimes we are tempted. I have also done it so many times in my patients, but I've realized uh, with a lot of pain that it doesn't help. And it's not useful because most of the times you will not be able to differentiate anything because these are already lysed cells. You cannot even diagnose whether it's a typical or there could be a lot of apoptotic cells there. So it's difficult. Breast biopsy and skin bi punch biopsy is something that has to be considered as swiftly as possible because the tissue diagnosis is going to help us take the direction forwards. So as I had mentioned that we'll be looking at an algorithm at the end of my talk. And this is the algorithm where you talk of a <clears throat> non-lactational nipple discharge. Is there a palpable mass on clinical evaluation is the question you ask. If it is so, then evaluation of the nipple discharge in the setting of a palpable mass does not differ from that of a palpable mass without discharge. and you can have actually, there's a wonderful write-up and up-to-date. If you want, I can share it with all of you. 
Does the nipple discharge have any of the following characteristics? Unilateral bloody associated with the mass or skin changes? If the answer is yes, then pathological discharge women more than 40 mammogram plus ultrasound. Women 30 to 39 mammogram or ultrasound may or may not be done. Less than 30 ultrasound first and then mammogram. And men of any age mammogram plus ultrasound plus breast MRI if negative ultrasound and mammogram is seen. Now, physiological discharge, if there is galactoria, ensure screening mammogram for women equal to more than 40, medical evaluation and treatment for hyperprolactinemia and other causes of galactoria. If there is a suspicious lesion, core needle biopsy with clip placement, that is for finding it out or identifying it, malignant cancer treatment, benign surgical excision of the lesion, if the discharge stops, no further intervention persists, surgical excision of the discharge duct to relieve symptoms. And if there is no suspicious lesion, you will follow surgical excision of the discharging duct to relieve symptoms. So this is uh, what I have had to say about the abnormal nipple discharge. And with this, I say thank you. I hope I have been able to make justice to what has been given to me. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, madam. As usual, your talk was really excellent with the crisp you, take home messages. Thank you, madam. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think that it is a very, very important topic uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Girija has covered so beautifully. And um, I think uh, uh, what happens is that very often uh, you just have to uh, think of all the red flag signs associated with. Uh, uh, abnormal nipple, nipple discharge. Firstly, if it is bloody, if it is from uh, um, a single duct, uh, and if you feel a lump, I think uh, these three will probably be the red flag signs uh, uh, for any abnormal nipple discharge. But if it is bilateral and it is greenish or a little bit of yellowish colored, then uh, and it is from multiple ducts, then you know it is uh, very often it's going to be a benign kind of a discharge. So uh, we just need to uh, you know have our red flag signs in place which Dr. Girija has so rightly told us. And one more point I would just like to mention is about the ductoscopy. I think in uh, bigger hospitals in Mumbai and many other places, and in, you know, uh, people doing exclusive uh, breast cancer work, they do have a ductoscope, which is a very fine uh, scope, which they can you know actually scope the duct and uh, look for the presence of these intraductal papillomas. So uh, these are just one or two thoughts I thought we should just uh, highlight upon. And uh, Dr. Charmila, you would want to... Um, Charu, I was also going to speak about the ductoscopy only because oh, I've okay, heard yes. a lot of people doing about it and yes. uh, this is very focused and now it is the need of the hour because we are getting so many people coming up now with all the discharge and if we have modalities to our armamentarium, we should use them accurately. So this is a new thing in which they can see the duct, whether it is a block or there is any pathology in the duct and that can be well seen. So I think Dr. Girija has completed every aspect of it, the screening, counseling and how the management, everything. So excellent talk. And uh, I'm waiting for Charmila's comments. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Kamala. It was a wonderful talk, uh, Dr. Girija, as always. Uh, she, the, so there, there are certain points which actually uh, the emphasis on do in, uh, from her talk, like uh, do not miss the drug history. She may be taking a drugs like ranitidin for a long time. Uh, that can cause a discharge and many times people will not even think about an uh, ordinary drug which is causing discharges. And the other one is tuberculosis of the breast. It's quite common. It's not uh, as rare as... I think we lost Chamila. Yes. Uh, yes. Till that time, Chamila comes back again about the ductography and the galactography that I make. My ductoscopy I mentioned. Currently, the status is it is in the phase of evolution. And it is yet not identified as a gold standard. But yes, I think it has a promise down the lane. Correct. So that, you know, we can identify, at least know that it's benign or malignant and then take. Because mastectomy turns out to be a very, very debilitating yes. approach if it turns out to be benign once later upon, on. Once upon a time, mastectomy was the only thing available for abnormal nipple discharge. Yeah. So today we have all these newer modalities which can, you know, help us reach a diagnosis and, uh, you know, uh, obviously saving breasts along with saving lives uh, go, does a lot of benefit to the patient's uh, psyche also. 
so i think that uh, you know these new models as always uh, charu i may be a little repetitive but i want to share this because i've been uh, i've had uh, the privilege of being on your two breast uh, programs yeah. but i like to say this because there are again new uh, friends here on the yes, forum yes. Yes. that you know the tata institute some time back because i had i was very fortunate to be part of one breast screening workshop long time back okay uh, at cancer screening program that was for three days and that time i remember they had conducted a study in uh, mumbai and they uh, identified one component of the city uh, where they gave actual supplements to women there uh, where uh, they were giving concentrates of folates and folic acid which are similar to green leafy vegetables while other women in the other area were studied as a comparison this was a, a case control study and they observed that there is a remarkable reduction in the breast uh, cancer occurrence in these women this was a very small study but it le left such an impact on my mind that when dr charmila was saying about obesity which is a huge problem currently giving rise to so many other diseases we must insist on proper health care for women whenever we get an opportunity about weight modification weight loss diet and using you know proper uh, breast clothes because even one of the studies has shown that very tight clothes which women apply kare kamala you know women who come to us as maids and us is are wearing tight blouses yeah. since morning till night and even that can cause you know issues so whenever we have an opportunity i think we can just speak to women about preventive breast health as much right 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 fantastic so komal thanks a ton for being here and best wishes to all your further uh, endeavors uh, we uh, support your candidature as uh, for vice president for the post of vice president west zone and uh, we would like to see you more often on our webinars we shall uh, make it a point to have you with us and have your precious comments for the same thank you thank Dr. you thank you thank you so much aru i'm on the way but i made it a point that i will definitely yes, you had mentioned thank so you thank so you much. very much yes best of luck komal best of luck thank Smeha. you thank you thank you thank you so much dr priyanka oh ho dr priyanka has joined and we have to take uh, his sound bites because i'm, I'm sorry i tried joining before but couldn't join uh yeah komal ma'am as everyone was wishing you again all the all the best wishes ma'am and i'm really thankful i must say to charu ma'am for giving the public awareness committee a chance to be part of this webinar and thank monica as well from the amox side as well as a integral part of the public awareness committee for doing all the hard work that she's putting in so charu ma'am congratulations excellent program and thanks for having us here congratulations to us priyankur uh, yeah, at last we did a program together so uh, it is no, always I mean, a pleasure working with you and your team thank you so much thank, thank you, you. many more to go thank you well there's a small change in the program uh, uh, dr charmila needs to leave a little early because of her icog governing council uh, meeting and so if it is okay with uh, our uh, um, you know uh, moderators and uh, the other uh, people uh, is it okay if we take the panel uh, before the talk dr shaila i have no problems thank you so much uh, so dr taru i think you can go ahead with the introduction of uh... okay ma'am okay. yeah please. hello good evening everyone um, good evening ma'am so now we have a panel something solid of any size and shape is lumps and bumps if breast becomes rough or irregular or uneven it's important to evaluate and so we are here for so we have to start our panel i'll introduce my moderator it's my privilege to introduce dr charu she is director gems hospital endoscopy center in ashwin hospital pune now current chairperson study on female breast community policy and so many awards has been in yeah, her lab she's and she's part of the entire breast committee and we are so fortunate to have dr divya dr taru and you know so many fantastic uh, uh, warriors against uh, the fight for against the breast cancer so taru thank you very much and thank you for being here you're you're always a great support of the breast committee thank you i Next, just this uh, operator is yeah. dr rashmi dr rashmi karotkar kahar she is chairperson of amox high risk pregnancy committee she was organizing secretary amox 2020 and joint secretary isopap 
West Zone Coordinator, Breast Committee, Foxy. She has been gold medalist many times. Emergency Ops is her passion. Foxy Tank Award, Dirusha Trophy Award, and many awards during her secretaryship. Welcome, Dr. Rashmi, because uh, we are all short of time. Please, sorry, I am not going to read everything. So uh, I'll request our moderators to introduce our panel. Can you, can you even introduce our uh, expert for today? Okay. Dr. Charmila, ma'am, I'm privileged to introduce you. She's Vice President-elect, Foxy24, Chairperson, Clinical Research Committee, Foxy 16 to 18, National Coordinator, UNICEF, Foxy, National Coordinator, Meda Foxy PG Program, National Coordinator, Isar Gurukul 22, WHO, SCRO, MDSR India member, past secretary, Trichy, and president, Menstrual Hygiene Management Committee, 18 to 20. Welcome, Dr. Charmila, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Charmila. Um, Dr. Charu, will you introduce your panelist? You could or say a I... word about them, yes, please. You can just add one line. Our panelists are Dr. Varsha Lahare, please. Um, Abhishek ji, please. Uh, yeah. Dr. Varsha Lair, President Nasik OBJ Society, Zonal Coordinator MOX, and she's past President Secretary, past Joint Secretary, and Director of Prayag. I'm not able to see. She's the Director of Prayag Hospital, Hospital Nasik, Nasik and a very good friend. Yeah. And Hello. Dr. Manisha Ghatte, Manisha, um, West Zone Coordinator, Food Drug Medical Surgical Equipments. She is working as consultant in Ghatte Surgical and Maternity Hospital. Next, Dr. Anuradha Garar. She is president of Osmanabad OBG Society and director of Garat Hospital, Osmanabad. Next, Dr. Seema Patel. Her special area interest is critical care obstetrics and very good hobbies, gardening, traveling, and she is at present president, Jalgaon OBG Society. Next, Dr. Chawan Rajin Ratilal. He, is, he has received many esteem awards from organization for blood donation and family planning program in rural areas. And at present, founder of Maharashtra Blood Bank serving rural areas, founder of Kanta Maternity and Surgical Nursing Home. Next, Dr. Vanna Gadi. She is consultant OBG, sonologist, and endoscopy surgeon, founder of Female Fetus Protection and Safe Girls Council Center, a Kluch in July 1992. And President Ox, she was in 2018 to 2019 member of Contraception Family Planning Committee during 18 to 20 of MOCS. Next, Dr. Priya Shinde, consultant OBG Society in Shinde Multi-Speciality Hospital, Chandrapur, and Secretary Chandrapur OBG Society, awarded MS Signature International Award 22 for extraordinary contribution in the field of maternal and child health under rural health mission. Next. Yeah, so yeah. that is our very uh, esteemed. Very really, really short. Yes, very true. Our esteemed um, expert and our extremed uh, and extremely fantastic panelists, uh, Dr. Rashmi. Is Rashmi here? Rashmi is probably in an emergency. She said she'll join as soon as she can. Oh, okay, okay. So. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Taru, for all the kind introduction. And now we move ahead uh, to a very interesting uh, panel discussion, lumps and bumps in the breast. Let's get it on screen. Uh, Dr. Charmila, Charmila Ayu, uh, Ayavu is our expert and our panelists are Varsha Lahade, Anuradha Garad, Manisha Ghatte, I think, is unable to join, Dr. Priya Shinde, Dr. Rajinder Chavan, and Seema Patil, as has been introduced. So the breast is indeed an organ of growing concern. The form, function, and pathology of the female breast are major concerns of medicine and society. As mammals, we want to, uh, the breast is going to nourish the young. 
the breast contours occupy everybody's attention as obstetricians we seek to enhance or diminish its function sometimes you know when she is lactating and she doesn't get enough milk we have to try to increase the secretions and unfortunately if she has lost a baby we need to decrease the the, the work of the breast and as gynecologist the appearance of any inappropriate lumps and discharge is going to worry us because it can signify serious disease the discharge part has already been very well covered by dr girija wag and so now we move on to the lumps and bumps in the breast so very warm, warm welcome to each and every one of you uh, the objective of today's panel discussion uh, we are going to discuss about the various kind of breast lumps that can occur we are going to either, you know going to see how we can either exclude or confirm malignancy provide a diagnosis to the woman and provide an explanation if possible as to why this has occurred to her friends what is important is that benign breast diseases account for 80% of all breast pathology but every lump in the breast must be treated as malignant unless proved otherwise i think this is the bottom line or the dictum and a very important take home message that we have to make sure that we uh, prove that it is benign otherwise we have to consider it as a malignant let us just talk a little about the basics the breast is divided into 15 to 20 lobes by septae Each lobe consists of fibro fatty tissue and glandular tissue. There is a lactiferous duct which is lined by cubical epithelium, which is going to drain every lobule. Each duct divides and subdivides and ultimately ends in the alveoli, which is lined by a single layer of milk-secreting epithelial cells. And there is a rich capillary network, and there are myoepithelial cells which surround the alveoli. So when we get a lump, it can be either from the uh, the fat. it can be from the uh, lactiferous duct or it can be uh, through the uh, you know through the myoepithelial cells or you know or it can be through the alveoli and so we have to find out from where exactly these lumps have arisen and how we are going to uh, handle them and manage them so dr varsha dear friend uh, we would want you to start off with the opening batsman uh, we are going to talk about breastfeeding issues also which can give rise to lumps in the breast and so we here we have this 32 year old uh, uh, you know lady who's undergone a full term lscs for fetal distress just 10 days back uh, the baby is doing very well and here she has come to you with a severe throbbing pain and lump in the left breast so how will you proceed you know what all is the history uh, what all we are going to examine what do you think it is at first glance over to yeah. you <clears throat> hello yes yeah uh looking at this patient she is postpartum day 10 so she must be breastfeeding or she may not be breastfeeding so i need to ask her what a, what is the status present uh, whether she is feeding the baby or not one second i have to ask the history of fever of any kind chills along with it and when when this started when when was the pain started third whether there is there is any lump there on examination i should look for the color of the skin i should look for the swelling in the breast is it localized or is it generalized so um, these all things i have to examine i have to look for the nipples whether they are cracked or whether there is any injury and now after the injury whether she is feeding or not feeding that also matters yes so and the engorgement of the breast is looked for so all this goes in favor of mastitis ranges from mastitis to breast abscess Perfect. perfect perfect so i think uh, it is extremely important mostly is that you know whether you know she she is breastfeeding her baby or she is not breastfeeding a baby very often we see cases wherein uh, the family tells her that uh, the first few days you don't have to breastfeed it is not proper milk and you know she is discouraged from breastfeeding again she's undergone lscs we don't know whether you know she has been in a um, what do you say a breastfeeding friendly hospital where the baby has to be put immediately uh, to the uh, to the baby, uh, to the mother's nipple or uh, whether it's a normal or c section and what is her course of breastfeeding but looking at this entire situation it looks as if she has a uh, as a as a breast you know because on examination you found a tense tender hot fluctuant lump and uh, the right breast also appears to be engorged so now we have tentatively reached a diagnosis of breast abscess uh, with an engorged right breast and you know this is exactly how these breast uh, engorged bre uh, the breast abscess looks like with some pus dripping out uh, from the nipple also and um oh, i'm sorry uh, so uh, i you know uh, uh, the most important thing is that do we need to do any investigations dr varsha 
will you investigate any further you can definitely see i would see look for complete blood count what what is the status of her hemoglobin then varsha you have to unmute your speaker you have unmuted am i audible now now yeah now you are audible now you are audible. yeah we have to do a complete blood count for wbc as well as her hemoglobin status and uh, second a proper examination you have to diagnose the location of the abscess very important and i don't think mammography is needed this is simple yeah. clinical diagnosis so dr charmila would you would you advise uh, that you know we do an ultrasound in each and every case like this what do you no. think no it's not necessary when you have a clear cut diagnosis of yes. she didn't have anything 10 days back and after she's delivered and she's lactating she's having a problem i think yes. you should not over diagnose also do Absolutely. not overuse technology beyond a point yes 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 that is very rightly said because here it is a visual you know diagnosis absolutely you know and it's diagnosis and all of us you know as obstetricians have been dealing with this problem uh, day in and day out and our eyes and our hands are well trained to diagnose this particular condition and so a uh, ultrasound is not really necessary Uh, only if it is a very deep seated kind of an abscess or it's a very large breast we may have to do uh, an ultrasound for the same so um yeah how do we do it required yes you have to do a fluctuation test that we yes. do it with the fingers one if it's a hard mass think of antiboma because she might have taken lots of antibiotic and then you feel the antiboma differently yes it, it is little firmer yes yes absolutely yeah, thank you uh dr anuradha would you like to continue and uh, let us know how you would want to you know uh, move ahead in this particular case uh now the uh, we have to look for the breast abscess which is on the right uh, left breast so for the left breast uh this uh, we have to go for incision and drainage uh followed by the packing and for the right breast also we have to take care because there is a engorgement uh so we have to give uh, antibiotic uh, uh Uh, antibiotic drugs and also uh, we have to give some drugs to reduce her erythema uh, we have to advise the patient that she is supposed to continue the breast milk some other opinion also uh, dr priya uh, what, what do you think you would want to do in this case like uh, whenever you have a breast abscess uh, i agree it is a significant uh, abscess which we can see but uh, do you think that uh, you know what would be, be your uh, call in this particular uh, situation thank you madam for the invite if the diagnosis is clear cut if it is very big if the fluctuation is positive then we can go ahead with the incision and drainage because uh, armila you would want to add something over here or, or what do you think like uh, do you think uh, irt is recommended do you uh, do you believe in aspirations no somehow aspiration i am not, not comfortable with i would rather put her under sedation proper sedation and do an ind Uh, I don't know. You have mentioned about yeah. aspiration, but I don't have an experience of repeated yeah. aspirations. No. But an aspiration sure. is needed if we, if we, if there is a doubt, then we can go for the aspiration. And yeah. sometimes you have to break out or so many of those. Uh, the abscess won't be a single abscess. It will have lots of uh, loculations inside. So we need to break everything uh, to remove. This is the study which is published uh, in the Journal of Surgery, twenty twelve, quite an old one. And what they mention is that uh, um, surgical drainage of breast abscess, even if it's a large one, can be replaced uh, replaced by repeated needle aspirations. Why? Uh, because it avoids uh, surgery. It is minimally invasive. Avoids hospital admission, or uh, um, milk fistula formation, and certain certain cosmetic outcomes. Many of very often. and they believe that ultrasound guidance or uh, to do this particular you know such uh, abscess with a needle uh, can go a long way so very often you have ultrasound guidance even if it if they are you know located we give a little bit of uh, local anesthesia and we can uh, drain it so uh, you know many studies today are talking about uh, um, this kind of uh, needle aspiration Rather than an IND, and we have Dr. Mangala Vani in Pune, uh, who is a very uh, big, uh, what do you say, um, uh, proponent of this kind of repeated needle aspiration. She she uh, you know treats all her patients uh, with uh, these kind of needle aspirations. And I think at least what we can do is, if it's a small kind of an abscess, if it's a uh, uh, you know we have to make an effort. I think uh, to yeah. try these needle aspirations, which. This now. is a big one, right? You showed a picture. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. But they claim that even if it's a large one, they can you can replace it, and only if it doesn't work 
or if you feel the patient cannot come for repeated needle aspirations and iron it can be done yeah. Yeah. May, uh, maybe a, maybe it's maybe a good option because yeah. sometimes when you do those ind there's a big cavity yes. inside yes. and yes. the packing yes. and it the, the no, trauma no, that the no, mother no. undergoes for days together with the pain and everything probably and i think uh, many of us have seen the very ragged and uh, you know very bad ragged. scar which is left behind because of this so uh, in the west i think they are very much only into repeated needle aspirations i've had many patients coming from there they told told me about these kind of small abscesses or small uh, lumps milk lumps as they call them which which when she underwent only repeated needle aspiration and she did uh, well with it so i think this is a matter of uh, little interaction and discussion which we could have but what we have to realize is that the studies and many 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 articles today are moving towards these repeated needle aspirations also uh, i think we need to make it a habit we need to make it a point uh, probably the next time we can have a small uh, workshop wherein dr mangala wadi who has had a big experience with this can uh, maybe the demonstration may not be possible but can tell about her experience uh, with this yeah. and being part hospital also dr chavan you yeah. would say something i just wanted to tell one thing Yes. There, of course, we feel that it is there. We need to see whether it is organized or not, or whether it is pointing towards the surface or not. If it is not that, then uh, we should do little time with some painkiller and good antibiotics so that it is pointed on one place, so that uh, aspiration would be little simple, maybe a bit more difficult. But I think uh, it will take little time, but it will give a proper uh, pointing where uh, a incision can be taken. Yes, that is also yeah, possible. From invasive to we have to go come little minimal invasive. This yes, I think it really is well. Even I was in a favor of incision and drainage because I have done so many in civil hospital. But I have now turned shifted to aspiration because the patient they are giving a less invasive to the patient. One second she can continue to the breastfeeding. Yes, and, yes. yeah, it yes. is. Comfortable for the patient, not for the yes. doctor. In yes. IND, we we ruptured that all loculi, and we lose the breast tissue. There is a big fibrosis remains after healing of that whole uh, abscess cavity. And here, in aspiration, you just give the natural healing from inside, and it happens. So we all have to shift towards. Yes, I think so. It's a, it is a good take home message that the studies of today are, uh, you know, pointing more towards uh, repeated needle aspirations. I uh, see any wish has to come to the hospital for dressing, so then instead she might as well just come to the hospital for um, uh, for the for the aspiration. Uh, Doctor Seema, what would you uh, what antibiotic would you want to give her? Yeah, I I usually go with uh, amoxicillin clavulanic acid combinations. That will be my first choice. Second. Uh, in few cases i also give azithromycin yes yes i think uh, these uh, uh, azi azi i'm not sure uh, erythromycin maybe would probably be what uh, uh, would be recommended yeah erythromycin ketalosporin it is for staff better the discharge for culture sensitivity yeah so i think all of us must have found that although we send the the discharge for culture sensitivity very often we do not get any growth uh because probably we have already given adequate antibiotics because usually they come first with a little bit of mastitis we have already given antibiotics and then you know then afterwards the abscess forms so very often it is such that we have uh, we do not uh, uh, get any kind of growth but i think as a routine we do send it and that is what is recommended by most studies also so i think there's nothing wrong in sending it for culture sensitivity and uh, i think um cloxacillin uh, is also good cloxacillin Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. I mean, amox and clock, both combination is best. Uh -huh. If think of anaerobic, you can add metrogen. Correct. 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 But anaerobic is little rare in the breast. Very rare. Very rare. Yeah. Or uh, Dr. Anuradha, so what is more important? Prevention is any day better than cure. So we as obstetricians, you know, have to join hands in preventing such kind of breast abscesses from forming. And what would be your uh, take on this? I, I I would probably want every panelist to you know just give us a, a one one tip on good breastfeeding technique which they follow in their hospital. So I think each one of us can answer this particular question. 
there should be a good breastfeeding technique but for, for, firstly we have to also during the nc's we have to take care of our nipple if they are sore if they are cracked if they are retracted and we have to give some time at 26 to 28 weeks of gestation particularly for the primary uh, primary women uh, to counsel about the uh, about the uh, nipple care uh, if there is a nipple discharge if the many many of the primary patients have the crusting on the uh, areola and nipple so we have to advise them about the cleanliness uh, and the little massage to a nipple and using some lanolin if they have a very dry and a sore skin especially in the winter they are, we face uh, problems with the cracked nipple so we have to counsel them for you using some lanolin application or uh, any so. uh, that you use the uh, antenatal talk about the breast and yes. taking a look at the breast is, I think, you know, because we are so busy in our OPDs, we just take a look at the tummy quickly, just fetal heart, they clear, and, you know, we, uh, the patient is out, the next patient is in. So, probably taking a look at the breast is a good idea and talking to her about breastfeeding, which is going to, uh, you know, uh, it is a quite a, like a new sport which she has to learn. We have to at least introduce her to the topic. Dr. Vandana, what would be your, uh, you know, good breastfeeding technique uh, um, message just now? Dr. Vandana Gandhi? She's not there. Yeah, she's not there. She's, she's, oh, she's left. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The, so breast, think, uh, the second uh, point is latching, proper latching. Proper latching. Yes, it's extremely yeah, But also early rooming. Yes. Uh, yeah. baby, we, as That's soon as after delivery, we should uh, uh, encourage them, the baby, to be with the mother. Absolutely. In our country, that is not much of a problem. Early rooming does happen. Uh, because it's in the west where the babies are in a cradle or in a crash or something. But uh, in our country, it's not such a big problem. Dr. Rajendra, you would want to put, give your input? Yeah, madam, uh, patients should be propped up and uh, uh, baby should be vertical so that the uh, uh, gases or air, whatever is uh, uh, taken along with the milk, uh, comes out and the milk goes down. So there is no uh, omitting uh, post uh, this and uh, the mother should uh, be having almost uh, comfortable clothes to wear so that uh, the a baby can be easily and nicely fed. Absolutely. So I think uh, there are a number of uh, uh, you know uh, breastfeeding positions that have been recommended. Even if the mother wants to lie down and breastfeed the baby, it is perfectly all right. You have a football technique, a baseball, you know, and the cross cradle techniques. All these techniques. But what is important is that the infant's mouth chin and umbilicus. I mean, like uh, it should be an airtight grip. Yes. And latching should include the nipple as well as areola in the Absolutely. mouth of the baby. Uh, there should no, it should be noiseless uh, when the baby is suckling. Absolutely well said. I think uh, these are all very important take home messages. And we have to uh, uh, let her know that the breastfeeding has to start immediately. And uh, only then will the milk keep on coming out, you know, getting secreted in a, in a good manner. And um, uh, Dr. Charmila, what, what would you have to say about prevention being better than cure for breast abscess? We have to take out the time for counseling because you've got two extreme group of patients nowadays. The one who wants to constantly feed 24 yes. hours a day and the yes. other group which never wants to feed saying that uh, she's finding That's it difficult to have milk and all of them assume that it's a reservoir there and the moment the baby touches it, the milk will flow through. And we have to tell them it's not going to happen. And suppose the cesarean has been done, it will take two to three days for it to settle. So we have to, the counseling has to be very, very, very pakka for them on the first day of delivery because most of the times they'll have information from us. Girija was saying the WhatsApp university would have given them so much of information. So give the correct information and tell them. You have, I, I always use the example of a cow and a calf. Like the calf has to put its mouth to the breast before the milk comes. It's not going to come by just some the milkman going and taking out the milk. So you have to tell them, put your baby to the breast first. And once the, then the neurological stimulus starts and then the milk comes. And it's not a machine. It's not going to flow whenever she wants. So she has to take out that effort. And when you're very strict with her and a mother-in-law, it usually is good. Otherwise, this cracked nipple happens and they'll come back with an abscess after 10 days. Absolutely. Dr. Seema, can we just have one word, one input from you? That if she comes to you with, you know, uh, uh, just engorged breasts. To just now we talked about abscess. But if her breasts are only yeah. engorged, uh, then how will you help her out? I would actually sir, ask her to first, means the nipple and areolar portion, I will ask her to smoothen with her uh, fingers and then only give in um, uh, for suckling to the baby so that it can then latch properly. If it is a hard breast, engorged breast, baby cannot, grab, uh, the baby's grip, mouth grip is not possible and baby won't be able to suckle. 
so first thing and uh, i will ask her like alternately she has to express the milk also if she is feeding from us means milk secretions are more breasts are getting engorged then she has to feed from one side other side she has to express the milk next time she has to alter feed from the other side express from the other side so most important is you to relieve her engorgement so firstly you to reassure her that it is not a big problem don't worry we are here to help you out uh, so reassurance make her relax and pumps also you can use hot and cold fermentation you can use cabbage leaves uh, and of course you can use either manual methods or you can use a breast pump in order to engorgement and you have to make sure that she is feeding uh, you know the point is she has to empty one breast completely and then move out uh, move the baby to the other side uh, for uh, feeding from the other breast also so, so this one is is breast feeding sorry yes yes breast feeding yes so we have to make sure that we uh, you know teach her a little bit more about uh, the techniques of breast feeding so with that we finish our first phase and uh, i think dr vandana is not here um, so dr anuradha you would want to go ahead with this uh, second phase uh, This is a 28-year-old sexually active unmarried girl. She comes with complaints of a lump in her right breast. She says that it was there since the 10th class, but now it is somewhat bigger and it is occasionally painful. There is no family history of breast cancer. So, how would you want to proceed in this particular case? Uh, first, it is a clinical examination, madam. If the uh, if the lump is a uh, form, it is solid, it is mobile skin or skin on the lump is uh, is normal. Uh, there is no discharge from the nipple uh, then it is uh, supposed to be a benign and the age is a good factor so at the 28 year it is more less the, uh, uh, more likely to be a benign tumor and the malignancy is less likely at this stage absolutely i think well said so now you when you examined her you saw there is a 2.5 to 3 cm mobile solitary non tender lump in her right breast okay left breast is fine there is no other problem anywhere else so what diagnosis would you wish to come upon The most common at this stage is a fibroadenoma of a breast, which we see commonly. Uh, uh, you would, would like to highlight a little about fibroadenoma? Uh, these uh, fibroadenomas are the most common benign tumors which occurs in, at, at this age group, and uh, they are usually uh, solitary or a multiple. They are benign in. Uh, uh, they are usually benign, uh, and. Uh, Yeah. So, what what is important? What investigation would you like to do, Doctor Savan? You want to take over the question of investigation? Yeah, madam. Most most important is local examination is very important. That we have to see uh, the number and uh, the size and mobility. And uh, then second, then we can go on to uh, looking at her. Uh, if we uh, go for an ultrasound, that is the best thing. You can just uh, see by that. But uh, some uh, patient we may think of doing mammography also. But uh, to uh, localize and uh, see the yes, now she's just twenty-eight year old, and uh, on ultrasound you're going to get a beautiful picture because we all know that ultrasound is the preferred modality for um, any kind of diagnosis of any breast lump because the breasts are quite dense. Again, uh, uh, the younger patient, and so ultrasound is going to be much more better than any mammo or anything uh, for this young girl. And we are suspecting that it's most probably a fibroadenoma. So here you can see that you know fibroadenomas on ultrasound are usually seen. Is more uh, transverse as compared to uh, vertical height. I mean, they are more elongated, oblong kind of lesions. They are, and um, uh, they are, they are a hypo echogenic uniform mass is what we usually see uh, as far as uh, on ultrasound. So now uh, this young girl, uh, you have told her that uh, uh, young lady, this is just the uh, fibroadenoma, and it is also called as mouse in the breast. It is a very common kind of a tumor that we find. The ultrasound we have diagnosed. Now the point is that for any lump in the breast, a uh, friend triple assessment algorithm is what we are going to keep on hearing again and again. You clinically assessed that um, it is uh, it seems like a mobile lump. You are uh, you know imaging modality. You done the ultrasound and you can you have diagnosed that it is fibroadenoma. So would you want to go in for a tissue diagnosis in this particular case? Dr. Varsha, you can uh, highlight this. Yeah, here I have to have a complete examination of this patient. I will feel the lump one. Th- i will see the mobility of the lump third i have to examine the lymph nodes uh, if at all are there i have to look in the view of malignancy if i screen everything everything is normal then i would not go for any tissue biopsy at present 
Correct, correct. Dr. Sharmila, you would want to add anything about tissue biopsy in a young 28 year old, uh, 3 centimeter, almost surely proven fibroadenoma? See, there, it can be either way. Because she says it's growing. Uh, she found at the age of 15, but now at 28, yeah. she feels it's growing. It's yeah. got a painful element also there. Yeah. So your ultrasound will pick up whether it's fibroadenosis with fibroadenoma. Or it's going to be only a fibroadenoma. So you will have a suspicion of what you're going to see. When you have a suspicion, it's better for you to go for a tissue biopsy because sometimes even in very young patients, because there's a change in her symptoms, the, yeah. the, the, the lump is growing and uh, you, you can actually have a phylloids also sometimes, which are picked up a little early also. Yes. So it depends on what your clinical finding is. So as Varsha said, your examination should be the focal point and it will tell you whether you will go for a tissue biopsy or not. But probably for this patient, I will not do because it's she's just saying it's a little growth, not a big uh, increase in size. And uh, that, that's the way it, it depends. So I will not con comment on whether I will If somebody is terribly anxious and if somebody uh, is so worried all the while, if she's some HR somewhere or if she has some you know, strong family history of breast cancer, obviously we will be uh, doing a biopsy, but otherwise, in our routine practice, uh, we don't necessarily have to go in for a biopsy of this particular fibroadenoma. So, Varsha, what would be the indication of surgery in this particular patient? If, if, if so, or a, for any fibroadenoma for that matter. If, if it is, first thing is uh, suspicious of any malignancy. If she has a family history, one thing. If it's, as a Charmila said, if it is growing very rapidly, or in a short period, if it is increasing in size. Second, the ultrasonography finding, I would like to see whether the vascularity of the uh, lump, that is the mass, I have to see what kind of vascularity it has got. Yeah, so usually and the fibroadenomas are not vascular. They are very, yeah. very simple. Mm. So usually, what are the guidelines that have been mentioned currently is that uh, if the size of the fibroadenoma is more than 5 centimeters, if it looks like a giant fibroadenoma or a you know phyloids kind of a tumor, it's a complex fibroadenoma. Fibroadenomas beyond the age of uh, 35, or there's a family history of CA breast, and most importantly, patient request. So, Dr. Kumar, now this patient has come to you and she tells you, Doc, uh, I want to, uh, uh, I'm uncomfortable, I want to get this fibroadenoma out. So, what will you do? Actually, madam, when they come to me, quite a few girls, they come to me from school or college. Then uh, my, uh, my simple, uh, this is uh, I tell them to see. रस्ते में काफी पत्थर पड़े रहते हैं, सबको निकालने की जरूरत नहीं रहती है। जो पत्थर रस्ते में गाड़ी अटका दी है, कोई तकलीफ देती है, तो उनको करने की जरूरत है। बाकी ये सब पत्थर तो ऐसे पड़े रहते हैं, इसके लिए कुछ चिंता मत करो। उस टाइम के बाद देखेंगे। If it is the smaller size, then we just tell her and counsel her that just go and don't worry. And these are there. You can see. So this is the first primary counseling which we. Because okay. in the rural area where I practice, and this is where uh, our practice, uh, most of them practice. They have, they have a guard bola, so they have this thing in mind, that they have a problem. So they are really worried. But then they, we tell them they get counseling. Okay, but Priya, that but Priya, now this, uh, would, you, would you try ormiloxifen with her? Has anybody in our panel tried ormiloxifen for fibroadenomas? No, oh, madam. No experience. No. no. Uh, Chandra, I have tried ormiloxifen for this. This also and it works. Uh, but if they're small multiple, if they're small multiple, then they shrink to some extent at least. But of course, the question again arises, how long will you keep giving them? But if they're very young, say they're barely 18, 19, and they have multiple small fibroadenomas, then I've given for these cases. And, you know, then uh, for a few months, they regress. And uh, the patient is also quiet. She, she's, she accepts it as she grows a little older. And uh, you know, we've had a, a decent experience with ormeloxifen. So for this patient, there's an indication for giving ormeloxifen. She's complaining of pain. That's yes. the reason she has come to you. So Correct. there will be a fiber, and this is a hormone-dependent tumor. Yes. Give, give ormeloxifen for a period of time. She's got a symptom relief. Everything is clear. Then you okay. can follow her up. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. But now, uh, Dr. Seema, she says, no, doc, nothing doing. I want this out. So will you, will you remove this fibroadenoma? So if she wants and she's not listening, we have to remove it then. And uh, we'll remove it. We'll take a circum, uh, circumferential, like just the uh, areolar. Yeah. Inside the areola, we'll take the incision and remove it. Yeah. So you, will do it you will do it or you'll call a surgeon? 
I I do it. Very yeah. good. Yeah. That, is, that is the most important thing. I'm happy and proud of you, Seema, because it's extremely important. We have to take the breast back. It's it's our organ. It's a secondary reproductive <laughs> organ, and it is so simple. We remove such large fibroids from the uterus. And why we cannot remove this small fiber? Oh, no, 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 it is the easiest thing we can remove. It's so easy. It is so easy. Ten minute procedure. We yes. take a small incision, just enucleate it, hold it with Ellis, pull it. You may use a little bit of pottery at the base, perform um, hemostasis, and give her a beautiful monocryl, uh, you know, suture. Particular, you can take with monocryl. Yeah. Oh, if, if the fibroadenoma is superficial, you are easy to do. It is a mouse in the breast. So then well, you need to have some assistance before doing it. One. Yes. Yes, that is very important. You know, back, we cannot back, the girl. We cannot back, surgery, surgery society has already given this organ to you. So you can deal with it. <laughs> yes, but if it's very deep and if it's very big, then stress. Sorry? I've not needed surgeon yet to remove it. Good job, good job. So as Navarsha rightly said, if it is very deep, it's a very big breast. It's not too uh, big a fibroadenoma. Uh, you you may uh, you know unnecessarily dig here and there. It's the better than you may want a surgeon only in certain situations. Exactly. So just a special mention on cystosarcoma phyloids. Uh, they're large, painless, non-epithelial tumors. Uh, we had one of these cases. Uh, you know, in our OPD only. This is a. Uh, a web picture of these large fiber uh, or cystic sarcoma phyloids, but uh, nowadays they are just called as phyloids because most of the times they have been found to be benign. Uh, treatment is lumpectomy with tumor-free margins, but if it is very very large, uh, you have to me you may have to go in for a mastectomy. So we move ahead, uh, Dr. Rajendra, for our next case. We have already talked a lot about this, but we would just want to revise clinically what you want to do or what we do in our clinical setting. We have this 35-year-old woman who comes with pain in both the breasts. Uh, and uh, the she says she feels there are lump, uh, lumps in her breast which typically increase before menses. And currently she's premenstrual, she's irritated, and she's come to you. So, Dr. Rajendra, over to you. Uh, I think your internet is a little unstable because we are unable to hear you clearly. Yeah. And uh, we have to rule out any uh, tumor or any mass or anything. Uh, if it is not there, then it may be hormonal. Uh, might have come. So this is what uh, we'll have to do her investigate her uh, Dr. Varsha, you want to add something? Yeah, this is a classical case of fibroadenosis. Uh, yes. She has this pain premenstrual. So first of all, somebody's mobile. Uh, 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 two two instruments are working. Two devices. I know. I know. So, right. uh, in this case, uh, her pain is the problem. So, give her simple uh, analgesics. Varsha, Varsha right. now she's 35 years of age. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, she she's pain. pain and you can right. feel little okay. nodularity. I have to go ahead with doing a sonography for her. I think so. I would as want well to as a mammography once at least to know whether she has any infiltrative kind of disease. You have to look for this infiltrative. It doesn't give you any lump if she only has a big breast and she has that suspicious mind so think of this that in spite of pain you have to go ahead doing sonography as well as mammography once yeah so how many of us do sonography of the breast on our own no 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 ma'am only. We get it done. So actually now, uh, if you have your own sonography machines, start just handling that small probe, you know, that uh, a probe which is for the breast ultrasound. Just start keeping the probe on the breast. Just as we are teaching our patients to be breast aware. Now we gynecologists have to start becoming ultrasound aware of the picture of, of the breast. Okay. So uh, the cyst, so you can diagnose in a minute. Okay. You can definitely see beautiful cyst. 
fibroadenoma is also very simple okay and maybe fibrocystic disease is little difficult to diagnose otherwise but if you have a proper cyst uh, you know it's very beautiful so what is the whole bottom line of our breast committee is to make our train the trainers train our gynecologists now to become even more breast friendly with the palpation with clinical examination and with our ultrasound all of us have an ultrasound machine all of us have that small probe okay which is used for breast thyroid thing like that. so please just keep it aplala kai kalo na kalo you know you understand something you don't understand you keep keeping it keep keeping it and one day we will start learning because just as we have learned so many things we've done our own follicle monitoring we've learned our own early ultrasound you know scan and maybe those who are into obstetrics are doing their obstetrics only so similarly we can do our own sonographies for the breast at least start diagnosing you send later on outside that's fine but at least you can relax your key clinically and even on my ultrasound findings i cannot find anything abnormal so as Again, far as fibrocystic uh, sorry somebody was saying nahi i was saying that it's a matter of all pcp and dt nobody touches the breast is there breast is okay you know yeah you can do enter anything no no form to be felt Many often that is a painful, lumpy breast swelling, thickening of the breast can be seen, and very often we can have greenish yellow nipple discharge also. Uh, uh, and these are all very typical of fibrocystic disease or fibroadenosis. Now it is not associated with an increased risk of malignancy. Very important take home message. But certain histopathological types would have a fifty percent chance of developing breast cancer. So it is a good idea to keep following up these patients. Uh, so Dr. Anuradha, how would you manage these patients of fibrocystic disease? Uh, Dr. Uh, Divya has firstly, yeah, just... yes, yes, Madam has given a wonderful talk. First is a good counselling that we have. Uh, there is a very less chance of having a malignancy. Secondly, the patient has to have a restricted caffeine intake. Yes. Then uh, there is a role of an NSAIDs. Uh, then uh, uh, a tightly fitting bras. Then uh, OCPs, progestogens, dimethyl, uh, evening primrose oil, and some we are using as a uh, first line to be. We are using also pyrocontin and all belong F and all. Uh, surgical excision we have not done up till now. Uh, patient will respond very well with all these remedies. Absolutely. So lifestyle change is very important. Uh, what do you say, Charmila? Diet, diet. Yes, very important. Not a child. Yes, diet. Doctor Charmila is here, or she has left? Yes, she is talking. Oh, I can't hear her, madam. I think she has left. Okay, okay. All right. So I think this lifestyle change changes extremely important. Good diet, good exercise, well fitting bra, sometimes hot and cold fermentation. Uh, these things are uh, very important, and they usually go a long way in. Taking care, and I said even local creams are are effective. Huh? I think that is important to, to remember that local gels, pain pain relief gels, like Overan gels, can also help to reduce the pain. And we've talked about ormeloxifen, indeed a wonder drug. Danazol, tamoxifen are advanced drugs. Most of the times we do not need to uh, take these. Okay. So Dr. Anuradha, we have this uh, next case. So who's come to you? Forty-two year old lady who comes to your clinic. And she wishes to know more about breast wellness. Uh, you know, she's heard that breast cancer is increasing in India, and she wants to take care of her breast properly. She is otherwise totally asymptomatic, no problem with her breast, and she's into preventive health. Weight is fifty-eight kg, BMI is twenty-four, no hypertension, no diabetes, regular exercise, working part time, breastfed babies, no family history of any breast cancer. So what will we do? Yes, uh, uh, we have to uh, taught, uh, teach the patient about the self for breast care examination. Yes. Uh, then we have to. Um, uh, then we have to. Yes, we have to uh, teach our all patients. Then we have to get it uh, done by the do, gynecologist. Dr. Anuradha, this is a very very important topic of self breast examination. I would want you to just uh, uh, speak a few highlights about self breast examination. Uh, so the examination has to be done uh, in a relaxed position, that the uh, arms to be kept, uh, arms to be kept on the, um, uh, uh, it should be kept, uh, breast should be on the relaxed position. Uh, uh, then they should palpate, uh, palpate with the uh, palm, and uh, the uh, dot fingering has not to be done, and uh, 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 it should be done on the uh, usually on the first uh, uh, first half of the menstrual cycle because afterwards sometimes they may be feel some uh, lumpiness. So those patients who have a fibrocystic disease, they may feel some lumpiness in the breast, and they may feel some pain. Um, so yes, they should. Uh, it has to be done once a month. 
immediately after the periods if the woman is not menstruating she can fix any day of the month and do her self breast examination on that day with the middle portion of the fingers feel for the marble in the bag of rice do not forget the tail of the breast which is in the axilla and look for nipple discharge now what is most important is that many studies have said that there is insufficient evidence that breast self examination is effective in reducing mortality from breast cancer but what is important to remember that in a country like india where regular mammography and regular physical examination of the breast are not practicable because of public policies breast self examination is very 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 important and in a country like india we have to make our women breast aware our women don't even talk about the breast leave alone touch the breast so what is important is that we make the women breast aware let them even feel how their breast feels and then they can diagnose a lump in that particular breast no so she has come to you for the advice don't leave her correct. exam her correct correct get a mammography correct and- correct correct so now you have taught her about self breast examination and now uh, dr seema you are going to move on to clinically examining her breast how do you do it so uh, we can uh, examine her more preferably i would prefer in lying down position both her arms over her head and uh, uh, with my flat hand uh, with the middle uh, means uh, middle of my fingers right. uh, with flat hand i'll be just in rotatory movements i'll be feeling all of the um, breast tissue as That's well as the axillary portion um, and if there is no um, nothing no lump felt uh, then i would tell her that it's normal but i would suggest her for a uh, because she is more than 40 years to go for a mammography uh, just uh, okay. okay. so axilla in sitting position wonderful okay so there are three positions in which you want to want to examine her in the sitting with her hands raised up and with the hands on the chest and of course in the lying down position obviously we don't have so much time but a, a good lying down position check up is good uh, there's a radial approach concentric circles or vertical strips what you do remember is it will palpate right up to the clavicle up to the lower edge of the breast border up to the middle middle of the sternum and laterally up to the axilla extremely important so now you examined her you have not found anything wrong okay and of course the clinical breast examination all the studies are say that there is that the significant uh, decrease in breast cancer mortality because of clinical breast examination it is been proven beyond doubt so varsha now we move ahead to who want to suggest her a mammography so what will you tell her she says no no doctor yeah. it is very painful i don't want to do all that yeah and now you have checked me is... ata tumhi bagitla na varsha madam you have checked huh. me no problem now let me go while you making me do mammography so i have to counsel her first what is the modality of treatment how is it mammography how it is done so i have to counsel her before she has to mentally prepared for that uh, okay and then i will ask her to get it done because i have to tell her the significance and what's sensitivity and specificity of the so what all the studies and all over the world are telling us that mammography is the gold standard to detect yes. early stage breast cancer before the lesions become clinically palpable right. so you have to tell her that what your my hand cannot feel my mammography machine is going to tell me so right. whether she is high every woman just because she is a woman and has a breast is high risk for breast cancer as many as one in six urban women are going to develop breast cancer so it is very important to convince her that mammography is a must must so we, have, we have the biret staging we have the you know reports um, which are being mentioned we probably uh, deal that at, at some other time but this is a very important take home message that the screening mammograms have to begin between the age of 40 to 44 years but in our country they can begin a little later also up uh, beyond 45 but i think it's wrong to say that because in india we get breast cancer at a much earlier age so uh, ideally even at 40 if you begin a mammography screening it's a good idea uh, annual screening is very important and beyond the age of 55 years you can do a mammogram every 2 years okay so this is very important guidelines for mammography dr rajendra do you think that we should use ultrasound why can we not use ultrasound as a screening tool this come to you you have ultrasound machine you have somebody coming to do sonography says doctor don't send me why you want to send me for mammo uh, just uh, do my sonography and let finish it off what will you suggest 
you don't have to follow what i have written you can tell me what you feel i think you are muted sir hmm. uh, yeah, i would advise that mammography is the proper thing because ultrasound will be limited uh, knowledge in the x-ray along with that we will get uh, knowledge about the mirrors reading correct so it is been seen that see, but what I personally feel, if there is no mammography in your area nearby, then at least do an ultrasound. That is all what I would want to say. If there is no mammo and she is very fussy patient, at least do sono. And if you find something suspicious, then okay, you could go ahead definitely. But undoubtedly, mammo is the gold standard. But uh, and it has been seen that ultrasound screening in asymptomatic women causes unacceptable false positive and false negative outcomes and it is not acceptable for breast cancer screen. This is an important take home message. Other screening methods like MRI for high risk patients, genetic screening, the BRCA testing. I think we all have to realize that all these facilities are now available in all big cities. We have to suggest, uh, Dr. Anuradha, you want to take uh, say something on this particular point? All right. So this was about a, a, a 42 year old woman who had come to you for breast uh, advice. You told her about self breast examination, clinically examined her, and advised her mammography. Okay. So uh, these are our guidelines, doctors, which uh, tell us that once the woman is, is girl is 20 years and above, self breast examination should be done. Clinical examination may be optional. If the cell breast examination is monthly, she's 40 plus, mammography is compulsory annually, high risk mammography plus MRI annually. That is very important. So do any, madam, do you have any idea about uh, uh, thermal digital uh, uh, thermopix? Uh, yes, thermography. I'm, I don't think I've included it over here, but now you have the non touch uh, modality uh, called thermography, yeah, which is available. Uh, it detects the heat produced by that particular organ. We know that a lump, if it's malignant, is a rapidly multiplying cells. They produce, they produce more heat. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So that is why because they take the X-ray of the heat. Yeah. And then they are, are coming very much into vogue, and I just underwent my own thermography in Jaipur, and they gave me a clean sheet. Uh, but what is important to remember is that these things are available. Maybe once we are all well versed with the basics, we will talk more about these advanced methods of, uh, you know, a diagnosis of breast cancer. But the thing is, uh, one of the organizations, they want to introduce that in my area and they want to give it that uh, 30 lakhs. No, no, you please take a trial. Dr. Chavan, please take a trial. Because, you know, the breasts have to be cooled. The breasts have to be cooled for 10 minutes with a good fan blower. Right. Now, once the breasts are cooled, then it's very simple, on touch technique. And uh, see, previously it was uh, the man behind the machine was important because they used to read the the the, the report manually. But there were people, the, the, the breast consultants or somebody who was well versed with the thermography machine had to read it personally. But today there is artificial intelligence who is doing it. Now, because artificial intelligence is involved, now all our pap smears soon will be read by artificial intelligence. All our MRIs will be read by artificial intelligence. Very soon all these things are going to happen. But because of the artificial intelligence, I think it's a good idea. Because it, it is very simple. There is no pressing on the breast. There is no radiation involved. So it's a good method. Uh, 99% sensitive. It is a good method, doctor. Please start it. And you in the next webinar, you're going to tell us about the your uh, the outcome of that particular. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Madam, Madam, just a query. Yes. If she is 40 to 42, thin yeah. built on self-examination, there is no mass. Yeah. Examination by doctor, if there is no mass, still we have to suggest mammography every year for that patient. See, this is a very good question. In India, we have to modify things. Okay. In India, also, they say every two yearly, also, you do it is okay. Okay. But what we have to remember is at least uh, she has to come to clinical breast examination. And it has been proven beyond doubt that with mammography, you can diagnose lumps which are not palpable to the hand. Now, just, just I will go back one slide and I will tell you that here you have to understand. That along with the viroid classification, there is one more, you know, um, what do you say, reporting system of by, uh, uh, which, which radiologists follow. Believe me, the women with these kind of dense breasts, these are the ones who are at high risk of developing breast cancer. If she has microcalcifications, she's high risk of developing 
breast cancer. So, woman with dense breast, woman with a uh, non -dense, dense breast is extremely important to remember. And the, you have to identify who are high risk. And then you have to suggest for these. You know, very tiny breasts, very thin woman, you know, they are not high risk for breast cancer. You can uh, do away with it. But uh, I think it, uh, you have to identify high risk breasts on, mammo on uh, mammography. We will learn about uh, reading the, uh, the mammogram next time. You have to identify them and do for them specifically every year. Just now I have a friend who is 52 year old. Very dense breast, very dense breast, lots of microcalcification. Every year she does her memo. Only COVID she didn't do one year. And this mammography has caught a tiny lump. She has undergone a lumpectomy, you know, oncoplasty, and now she's undergoing chemotherapy. So you can save the life and you can save the breast also. That is the take home message, actually. So it is very necessary to identify higher breast. So I think we just move quickly to this last case because our one more talk is left. And uh, Dr. Priya, I think we can take this question. 52 year old menopausal since one year complains of lump in the breast. Uh, she felt it a month ago, but she was traveling. It is painless with a slight increase in size. What further history would you like to ask? Um, and how will you go about it? In uh, found, her menstrual history is important. Early menarche, late menopause, uh, maybe the risk factor. Then family history. If, she, uh, if there is a disease in the family, then uh, breastfeeding, how many months she has breastfed her babies, breastfed her not. If she's on any medication, and then uh, if there's any lump anywhere else other than breast in the axilla, if there's any discharge from the nipple. Correct. This history okay. is very important for this patient who's 52 years old. This is very simple. 52 year old, she breastfed her babies. She had her menarche at say 13 years of age and menopause at uh, 51 years of age. And not very obese, nothing very significant. So you just remember the non-modifiable and the modifiable risks of breast cancer. As you rightly pointed out, a family history, early menarche, late menopause, increased breast density. Friends, please don't forget this point. It's very important to respect for breast cancer. Uh, so now you, uh, uh, we will just uh, talk about what are the... Now you started examining her... Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. And what all will you look for? She's 52 year old. She has a lump. The first thing we think of is obviously CA breast. So what all will yeah. you look for? Exactly. First... Yeah, first, uh, when, when we examine, we feel, uh, see for the lump, we feel for the lump, uh, it's, it is usually hard, um, it is uh, with restricted mobility, Correct. Uh, usually it is uh, attached to the skin, over, over means overlying skin, the nipples are uh, sometimes pulled in, there is uh, dimpling seen in the nipples many times. There could be some discharge in few cases. And uh, even in few cases, redness might be seen. And uh, the skin over that uh, region is usually changed a bit. Absolutely. So, uh, main, main thing is the hardness of its consistency. Like consistency, mobility. These two are the main major things which differentiate them from the benign. A lump which is irregular with restricted mobility, Ch changes in the nipple, any kind of discharge and changes in the skin. It's usually a very, very rare symptom, although it can be seen in 10% of cases of breast cancer. Okay. So now you started examining her, okay? And um, uh, you found a lump over there, okay? So now what will you do next? Okay. You have a clinical research. This is, suppose, you know, this is the algorithm for examination. Now you are clinically finding a suspicious lump. Any of you can answer. We should be biopsied, madam. FNAC is to be done. We have yeah. to we continue with the exam malignancy because she is a 52 year old and the age is a very, very important factor. But we'll do mammography also for her. Just to so see what will you do first? What will you do first? Anybody from the panel, what will you do? Yeah, we have to go ahead with mammography. Mammography first. And, and this, in this always, always, this. always remember that the radiological investigation has to happen first and first. Only then to perform a biopsy. Why is that so? Because your biopsy can sometimes cause edema and inflammation no. there, and it can distort the mammography image. And that is why mammography is compulsory before doing this. Okay. You did a yes. mammography and uh, you, you, of course, you, you saw that there are no nodes. The triple assessment algorithm, friends, always remember clinical examination, uh, radiological investigation and 
the biopsy. Now, something mentioned that we have to go for FNAC. Friend, a uh, very important to remember that uh, in uh, rather than an FNAC, now it is the true cut biopsy which can be done. Okay. I forgot to put a video. The next time I will be putting a video also. We have started doing true cut biopsy. Extremely simple. Okay. Very easy. What to do? Because sometimes FNAC can miss, especially if it's a small lump, it can be missed. The true cut biopsy can be done uh, under ultrasound guidance also. And sometimes you can have an excisional biopsy. That means it's a very tiny lump. You're not sure what it is. Remove the whole uh, uh, bit and send it for histopathy. Okay. So uh, very often nowadays, friends, it has been seen that we do not do only mammography. We always combine it with the ultrasound. Because ultrasound has its own positive findings and mammography has its own positive findings. So very, very important that in any major center today, you will have mammography and sonography being done simultaneously for that particular patient. And uh, the patient might come and ask you, okay, why they did like this? You have to be able to tell them. So now, um, I think that because our discussion is going ahead and now, once we diagnose breast cancer, we are going to send the patient to either an oncosurgeon or a breast cancer consultant. Uh, we will be discussing, there's a lot to discuss in breast, but we will, due to shortage of time, we will be uh, winding up our panel. Uh, there are different types of breast cancers. And what is important, friends, once again over here, is the multidisciplinary approach. Okay? Please remember to involve counselors, medical oncologists, family physician, gynecologists, oncosurgeons. Everybody has to be here. And nowadays, very important is the fertility specialist also. Because in our country, we are having breast cancer at a very younger age. You know, she may be barely 32. She may not be having a baby also. Uh, in such cases, you have to make sure that you, you send her uh, to a fertility specialist. The fertility specialist, if she has a steady partner or she's married, she can preserve her embryos. So you can start the, uh, the you know, I think Seema Patil, all, all of you are fertility consultants. So, you know, you can start her on a, a cycle uh, to stimulate her, retrieve her eggs, to... Uh, uh, do your, uh, what do you say, ICSI and freeze her embryo. Okay? Give her the option of preserving her fertility before closing for any kind of uh, radiation, any kind of on 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 oncological treatment. And of course, early diagnosis is going to not only save lives, it is going to save the breast as well because we can now do only lumpectomy or quadrantectomy and use oncoplasty to save the breast. So, oncoplasty is very, very important. Early diagnosis can save the breast also. So, as we come to the end of our panel, I would want to say that prevention is better than cure. Managing the patient's weight, her diet, physical activity, uh, breastfeeding her babies is probably the only thing that we can suggest to our patient. We are her point of first contact. Huh? So, uh, breast is a secondary reproductive organ and every gynecologist should be very well versed with it. Most lumps in the breast are not malignant, but every lump in the breast has to be treated as malignant and dispute. Otherwise, the triple assessment algorithm helps to streamline the management of all breast lumps. Ultrasound and mammography are complementary to each other, and a multidisciplinary approach in the management of breast cancer is a must. Thank you, dear panelists. You'll have been an excellent uh, panel, and I would really thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Very uh, nice. Active interaction. And we, we will keep many more, and we'll be keeping discussing many more advances in this field of breast cancer management. Thanks for a wonderful panel, madam. You are excellent as a moderator. We just loved it. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. And all the best for your uh, breast committee. We are going to be a close friend and confidant, and we all have to take this ahead. And I'm sure that today's uh, delegates, today's panelists, everybody hopefully have benefited from this particular panel. And we will take the organ of the breast back. And now uh, I, I will stop sharing. And we have a very important talk. Please don't leave because Dr. Shaila is going to talk about how to organize a breast cancer screening camp. And it is very important to all of us because all of us uh, need to do this on a much larger scale and spread the message of breast uh, awareness. So uh, over to you, Dr. Taru. Um, uh, thank you, Dr. Charu. Very nice panel. All the chapters concerning this breast are covered in this panel. Thank you. So thank you. early detection, 
will improve outcomes. Correct. Breast screening is the medical screening of asymptomatic women in attempt to achieve early diagnosis. How we promote and organize? Now we have discussion on this. Our esteemed chairpersons are Dr. Siyoga Ranat Panat, P A N A T Panat. She is consultant OBG Society at Amravati. Received late. Srimati Sarya Chaudhary Award and late Tripti Anrit. Ma'am, we can skip this. Yeah. yeah. She's a fantastic. Yeah, she's a very good award you have. Very had. intelligent and uh, uh, it's a pleasure uh, to have Suyoga over here. And she Thank is a member of PCPND Advisory Committee Amravati at present also. And another speaker, uh, chairperson is Dr. Nirupuma. She's president Kolapur OBG by Society. And uh, I'm Arsioji. She is very nice and working with NGO Jan Swast Daksha Samiti. This is very important because we are just going to have this only ki how we can organize our camps and how do we do according to this. Please, uh, Dr. Siyoga, can you please yes, introduce? Yes. Uh, at the outset, I would uh, like to extend my thanks to respected Charu Madam and uh, uh, dear Dr. Monica for giving me this opportunity to chair this wonderful session. And after the brainstorming uh, panel discussion, uh, we are here with uh, uh, another uh, important session and uh, we have with us a uh, uh, very active, dynamic social activist as well as a medical journalist and writer, uh, Dr. Snehla. Sehla Jamal, and uh, I am indeed privileged to introduce her. She is associate professor at uh, RMA, RMRI Rivalry. Uh, she is founder president of Menstrual uh, Disorders and Hygiene Management, chief editor, Journal of Reproductive and Menstrual Sciences, director, Menstrual Health Sciences at uh, Pin Pink She Foundation. She is a North Zone in charge, Young Talent Promotion Committee, Foxy. She's a coordinator of Endocrinology Committee, FOXI, and MEU coordinator. She has 44 publications in national and international journals. She has contributed seven chapters in FOXI Focus and other books also. She is a peer reviewer in four international journals. She has many awards to her credit. She, is a, uh, she has got the FOXI Leaders of Tomorrow, FOXI PAC Award, uh, Award of Honor by WHO. She, is a, she has also received Award of Excellence by Gram Laya and Ministry of Sanitation and Drinking Water. She has achieved first prize in paper presentation in Adolescent International Conference. She has also received the Corona Warrior Award by UPCOG. She has presented papers, lectures in many international and national conferences. And she has also organized many state and regional conferences. So over to you, Sinhal Madam. Uh, and uh, thank you again, Charu Madam. I appreciate your ever smiling nature and uh, really the panel was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Suyoga. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Suyoga, for your kind words. And uh, thank you, Charu, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. I was uh, still engrossed in your panel discussion. I was looking down the points. Oh, All were so practical and uh, wonderfully explained too. So I hope my screen is visible. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. So thank you, Charu ma'am, for giving me this particular topic, you know, so different yet so important. So I'll be discussing how do I organize camps. And when I have written I, it means all of us as fraternity, how do we organize camps, right? So thanks foremost to the leadership of Foxy and uh, especially to Sneha ma'am, who introduced me to the world of breast diseases, the problems that females are facing. And thank you so much, Charu ma'am, for letting me continue in her endeavors too. So what is the need and utility of these camps? So need is we are connecting. We are connecting through these camps between two needy groups. If we feel that camp attendees are the only ones who need them, we are highly, highly wrong and misguided in our perceptions. We also need them. We also need to improve their health conditions and need to be there for them, for their diseases, 
for getting them screened earlier, to need to talk to them. And when we talk of utility, uh, it has to be looked because, you know, a poorly organized activity actually is serving no one. As far as the definition of a medical camp goes, it means a temporarily organized activity within a specified locality in order to provide free, subsidized or sponsored medical consultation, diagnostic services or treatment. So uh, one point I would like to highlight over here is that a medical camp need not always be free. We can always introduce subsidized or sponsored items, materials and services into the camp to improve utility. So uh, I will be throwing on insights on how to organize camps because since last 13 years I have been putting up, I think I have put up more than 94 camps in and around Delhi, NCR, different states of India. So I have covered almost 14 states across the country and a very, I feel quite privileged to do so. And more so because uh, my husband is in army, so he has been taking me through and through uh, the you know tour of this nation. And I feel very humbled and honored to serve womankind in whatever capacity I can. So it is the need of our, and as we all are with Modi ji, we need her ghar detection. You know, detection should be there in her ghar, and we should do it by ghar ghar jakar detection. So that is why the need of these camps. One word about the leadership of Dr. Charulata, who is chair uh, person of the study on female breast committee of Foxy. Without initiatives, leaders are simply workers in leadership positions. She has, you know, come out of that. She has put on this initiative as to how we can maximally utilize this activity, which is just seen as a camp lagaya tha, a camp kia tha, ho gaya, photo khichwai or aage. So role is these camps act as catalysts for women to seek medical attention or discuss with local healthcare workers concerns of discovering new lumps or developing breast symptoms, which they're unable to do so. They have no access. And as I always say, internet is for uh, disseminating knowledge, which is not required everywhere, which is not required by everyone. So first and foremost, before we plan up a camp, we have to see what are the big intentions and what are the ulterior motives. So we are living in the era of 50 shades of gray. So not all our intentions can be absolutely wide. We are not doing it for pure social and humanitarian services. And if once, twice, thrice, we are doing it, okay, good. But for others, even for the purpose of advertisements, even for you know gaining the number of patients, buyer seller relationships or awards it is fine it is completely fine we have to understand that whatever purpose we are doing with that ultimately that female is the beneficiary ultimately her breast is getting examined ultimately she is getting some access to some diagnostic services and she is getting access to a health care provided like a provider like yourself so outcome can yield you photographs for social media good Numbers for records or awards, very good. But the ultimate thing is effect and impact. So let us understand the difference between effect and impact. I would like to use this picture. This is effect. The herd is gathered, large numbers, beautiful people. But this is impact. So this is what we are aiming for. Effect meaning result, okay. But impact means result with a blow and bang or to pack firmly together so that we make a difference in that woman's life, right? So once we have made a difference by talking to her, by making her aware of her breast, her body, leading her, guiding her to healthcare providers, facilities, we definitely are doing this Neki. Earlier it was said that Neki kar darya me dal. Abhi darya nahi hai, sook gai. So Neki karo and social media pe dalo. So that other people are also knowing that this can be done in this wonderful way and people can benefit uh, from such activities. Along with this, collection of data is very important. So collect this data, use it for yourself, use it for your friends, use it for reflections and use it for improvising. Now coming to when you are organizing this camp, your intentions are clear, you know what you want to achieve. Let us see what types of camps you can organize. They can be rural. Now in rural areas, majority of the camps are organized by politically inclined people. 
so you catch hold of them the one who has won some election take his help he would want to win another election and help you the one who has lost election take his help he would like to win another election he will help you ask sarpanches our social workers ashas ngos and pos they have targets to fulfill you help them fulfilling their target and your job is done in urban areas schools colleges corporates lots of social responsible activities are going on take help from ngos and npos and local individuals who more or less are working purely for philanthropic reasons and for marginalized communities like commercial sex workers tribal areas these are you know things and dreams of uh, near future but let's cover the majority first then we can definitely come to them so at the organizers end this is the picture we are standing here lot to see so what is the first thing that we see so now this gentleman in one of his very famous interviews once said that to be a philosopher or philanthropist you need money you need to be rich first so we need not be very rich by money but by heart we definitely are and we all know that nothing comes or goes free so for health camp take monetary help sponsorship help from ngos and npos from farmers from politicians take some funded projects because csr activities of giants are going through they have to spend 2% of their annual net profits on corporate social responsibilities activities government aided funded activities can be obtained through uh, by registering ngos or organizations in ngo darpan there, there we can get lot of uh, you know funds if we are eligible and nowadays csr linking agencies are putting up csr meets and summits there we can attend and we can find whom we can connect with so as i said earlier also because our intentions are very very pure but we need money so these things can help us procuring that kind of money there is a lot of money floating around in 2021 25714 crores was spent and around 60% was given for health care by csr activities in india WHO UNICEF are doing a lot of fundraising activities and they are especially use it like utilizing them for health and education sector go and grab it so we can always put up alliances we can always ask our friends who have already uh, you know uh, made liaisons with these uh, organizations and then these activities to take help so as we are the almost breast cancer capital of the globe we need money and here is the guide csr summits activities and lies me so this is the number i even can't read it this is number of females with some sort of breast problem be it cancer lump mastalgia discharge anything so this number is scary this is the number of females having breast problem across the globe at one point of time in india we are having 66.2 crores of females who are having registering 1 uh, lakh 1600 cases of breast cancers annually and one breast cancer cases diagnosed every 4 minutes i have been given 12 minutes while i finish three cases must have been already identified so we have to detect them mass detection camps are good uh, activities they serve as first point of awareness majority of the females must not be knowing only second is they will come to know about healthcare facilities because during my entire experience people do tell me ki hame pata hi nahi tha ki yahan pe ye wala hospital hai aur aap is cheez ko bhi dekh sakte hain and then finally we can identify healthcare leaders who become points of contacts for further facilitating the dis, uh, you know dispersal of information education and diagnostic and treatment services for these females so let's review some concepts uh, how to organize camps by way of site size season sentiments substance and solutions so site should be accessible advertised seating arrangements should be nice there should be clean toilets refreshments can be provided but it should be hygienic a private place and infographics lots and lots of them should be displayed wherever you are putting up your camp so the best of such a kind of site is a school schools are always well advertised everybody knows them they are on google map wo kahin golo galiyon mein aur konon mein nahi hote they are accessible rickshaws can go autos can go so choose schools majoritarily while you are putting up camps second is 
identify a female dominated working place if you are putting up for some company or uh, anything put them up near residential areas dana wahi daliye jahan par chidiya usko khane aaye so there is no ta- point wasting time at a place jahan pe majorities uh, work place is gathered by male working force when we talk of size organizers and beneficiaries should be proportional enough doctors paramedics counselors and educators should be there take help of volunteers you know they just need your certificate aur kuch nahi chahiye they will help you immensely in advertisement in helping in counseling and in data collection and entry so 20 beneficiaries per healthcare provider is the most ideal number if you expect more numbers take more doctors third is season it is very important it should be extremely comfortable for a woman to commute and unclothe herself if you are using mammogram if you are using your cold hands to do a clinical breast examination she should be comfortable hospital based camps can be organized in any season of course but when you are going for mass detection camps you have to look for this mausam so the most beautiful mausam for putting up camps is from 15th february to 30th april and so september october november entire 3 months can be dedicated for uh, dedicated for putting up camps then coming to sentiment you know we have to look for what uh, people might be you know easily aapne koi aisa word use kar diya us pamphlet pe jo wahan ke local population ko offend kar jaye we have to take care uh, we have to consult local bodies local people land club rotary dpos they are doing lot of work so they can easily tell us second is avoid festival times and examination times take proper consents because if you have detected something you want to take picture even for social media people may come and you know put a backlash that why did you use my picture so take proper consents advertisement infographic infographics should be in local language it should be pre and post advertised in local newspapers awards and felicitation ceremony can be organized like if you given a award to an asha she will come and she will bring four or more people with her and promote local people instead of promoting ourselves we should be promoting local people because they promote they feel very great and grand when we are promoting them and you are promoting them indirectly you are promoting yourself only then a uh, proper substance that is logistics gloves writing papers info brochures should always be there pre printed follow up advice that you have to come after 7 days just put up a tick it reduces a lot of time pre designed breast diagrams just two circles quadrants nipple area and tail of spencers that can be already uh, be there and you just have to put up the findings over there mammography device should be present in a very private area not in khullam khulla thermal scans handheld devices if we are using we have to put up proper screens cytology collection if you wish to collect nipple discharge for cytology uh, whatever way it has to be properly there we just cannot carry away those cytology slides because it will serve no purpose then better not to prescribe any medications because then what people do they believe that if we will take medicine we will get all right they will not follow your follow up advice then you can organize a competition beforehand for posters and you can uh, put up those posters in that area and felicitate and give award to those uh, people who have uh, you know participated in that those competitions and finally solutions solution come when you know what is the magnitude of problem so data collection is entirely and extremely important you can do study and research and it is not can do you should do study and research breast committee can have a pre designed performer and we have and i'll share it with charu ma'am very soon uh, we will be having questions in that you can add yours whatever you add or delete just collect it at a central data pool so that we can analyze it publish it and use it or for our future references definitive management can be provided on phone or email and hospital appointment at as per the uh, patient's choice suppose i have gone 15 kilometers away so i cannot call patient ki tum 15 km dur chal ke aao no provide a healthcare provider who sits by her end near her place extra miles to cross if even if you want it for your business plans marketing plans project proposal campaigns etc go ahead because whatever you are doing you are detecting breast cancer cam, uh, cancer in females which is ultimate goal extra efforts for making long term follow up arrangements creating mascots and brand ambassadors and licensing for repeat camps 
दिस यू हैव टू डिसाइड देन एंड देयर ओनली बाद में कर लेंगे नहीं चलेगा इफ यू हैव टू पुट अप अ सेकेंड डेट पुट इट अप देयर स्टार्ट प्लानिंग फ्रॉम देयर ओनली एंड फाइनली डू अ स्वॉट एनालिसिस ऑफ योर कैम्प आइडेंटिफाई योर स्ट्रेंथ वीकनेसेस अपॉर्चुनिटीज ट्रीटमेंट्स एंड डॉक्यूमेंट देम बिकॉज द स्क्रीनिंग इज नॉट आर एंड पॉइंट राधर आफ्टर स्क्रीनिंग वॉट इज द काइंड ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट वॉट इज द काइंड ऑफ प्लान वॉट इज द टाइप ऑफ गेम वी आर गोइंग टू प्ले इज आर फाइनल एंड पॉइंट सो लेट इट पास थ्रू द फाइनल ऑफ अवेयरनेस डिस्कवरी ऑफ मोर पेशेंट्स इवेल्युएशन ऑफ दोज पेशेंट्स आर इंटेंट टू ट्रीट इन टर्म्स ऑफ लोकैलिटी आर थॉट प्रोसेस शुड बी अलाइन एंड लॉयलिटी टू सर्व आर पेशेंट्स एंड आर नेशन and final outcome should be the treatment of this patients rather than just the screening so you have to plan them keep your uh, planners ready and uh, we will be having a bank with uh, breast committee foxy by putting up lot of camps lot of research lot of data and lot of good work thank you so much if i could stand up and giving you give you a standing ovation shaila i would have done one Thank you, ma'am. See you guys over to you. You have to unmute. Extremely wonderful talk, excellent talk, and uh, really, we would like to give a standing ovation to madam. Uh, and very rightly said that uh, screening is not the end point. because after screening we need to treat the patient also and to take uh, the regular follow up till the treatment is complete so uh, hats off to you madam for the and the slides were really wonderful they were so meaningful i would uh, if we can get this presentation i would be very happy to any time shehla so can you see the pearls and the diamonds and the rubies that breast committee has Yes, madam. Uh, Definitely. Dr. Saruchaya, you have Dr. Divya, you have Dr. Shaila, we have Mangala Vani, and all of you, you know. So, um, I am blessed. So, you know, any anything that these people decide to do is going to be a great success. Dr. Shaila is too good. Too she, too good. She is outstanding, and uh, we would really want to, you know. Um, make a little flow chart shaila so that we will circulate to all our presidents and secretaries uh, of uh, of all our societies of india so that we have a small you know uh, like those those who are keen those who are eager they will definitely go ahead and organize these camps kinds of camps and you know as you rightly said we will uh, get more data and even be able to make a difference that is that is so very important the tagline was also very nice madam har ghar detection ghar ghar detection that was also right so is that is going to become another hashtag now for every yeah. campus yes yeah. madam <laughs> is it not so thank you once again shaila i think uh, uh, we know uh, it's a, it, there is there are so many questions in all our minds that we'll have to have a dinner meeting with you one on one uh, to get all our doubts clarified but um, it's a great way to start and uh, we are so happy that we took this topic in our um webinar thank you yes. ma'am for having me here actually to express and algorithm reckoner and follow plan advice everything is ready with me i'll share it with you in, including questionnaire absolutely absolutely shaila we'll take it forward from there absolutely so dr monica over to you Hello, ma'am. It was very, very nice to hear you after a long time. You truly Thank deserve you. standing ovation, ma'am. Uh, at the uh, end of the session, I would like to conclude by giving the vote of thanks officially to all the office bearers of Foxy who could join and who, uh, who have joined and who have not joined also. That is, Doctor. Just want to uh, can I interrupt, Doctor Alka Pandey, madam? Just called and I think she is watching this live on um, on some link. <laughs> that was a good thing yes ma'am thank you yeah uh, i would first uh, and foremost like to thank our chief guest dr rishikesh pai sir our guest uh, and dr rajendra singh pardesi sir the guest of honor dr smita tandurwal sir madam and sneha bhuyar madam also dr madhuri patel madam and sujata darvi madam for extending their best wishes and being so supportive uh, to all the programs Uh, the both the vice presidents, Dr. Yashodhara Madam and Dr. Alka Pandey Madam, who have given us a free hand to work 
without which ma'am it is absolutely not possible to work because they blindly trust us so much that whatever we do they are always there with us we thank both of them for the same i would also like to extend my thanks to charulata madam and priyankur for giving me an opportunity to conduct this program under the banner of amok also we also would like to thank all the faculties dr girija wag madam dr divya sangal madam and dr sayara jamal who have put in a lot of effort to organize and gather so much of information in such a short span of time that it is truly truly benefiting to the delegates dr charulata madam and and dr rashmi madam the panel discussion was the icing on the cake as i said ma'am it was truly exhaustive and all the topics were discussed extensively by all the panelists i also would like to extend my thanks to travela madam for being the expert panelist i would like to thank all the chairperson the master of ceremony pratika madam divya gora madam and tarushaya ma'am last but not the least the corona remedies who have given us the academic support foxy breast committee foxy psc as well as among psc committees have put join, uh, hands together to put forward this academic front in front of you let us all take the benefit from this thank you so much everyone for joining in outstanding outstanding absolutely i think corona remedies deserves deserves, deserves a big round of applause mm. uh, mr abhishek you have been so patient and you have been so kind as to bear with all our ups and downs and uh, in spite of that uh, you gave thank us thank you so much ma'am thank you so much ma'am and uh, this would not have been possible without your um, you know without your untiring support throughout these last 15 20 days thank you thank you thank i think it was a pleasure having everybody here thank you dear faculties thank you dear delegates and thank you everybody for this wonderful webinar and i'm so happy that i did my first webinar of my tenure with my parent society that is amongs thank you amongs thank you foxy thank you everybody for being here thanks congratulations, congratulations. dr chalu thank you so much yes let me stop the recording and then i